is the Glass Cannon Network. Good evening, everybody. You know, we here at the Glass Cannon Network, every week we put out a calendar of the content that's going to come out for that week. And once in a while, there's a show that pops up that gets everybody juiced. (laughs) And that show is Friends of the Pod. And it is back tonight. (laughs) Yeah, it is. And and it's very exciting because the whole point of Friends of the Pod is like, sometimes you just want to do a show for a couple eps, play with some (laughs) friends and see what happens. (laughs) Not commit to a seven-year campaign. (laughs) <laughs> and so tonight we are joined by uh, several different friends and in my case one enemy in joe o'brien <laughs> i thought you were gonna make of the guess. pod <laughs> one enemy who i'll talk to later yeah. uh we uh we're, we're we're always uh we're always thrilled to have uh the lovely josephine mcadam and Nora ibrahim joining us friends yes! i mean c- close friends of the pod we need a new show called close friends of the pod <laughs> wow you <laughs> categorize everyone you have a- <laughs> uh so we have always, a ranking system uh, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> always lovely to have two uh two stars of the network uh joining us um and then tonight we are also joined by uh, 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 i guess you could call a new friend or a new old friend uh in mr brian holland from Colosseum. yes it is i the the titular friend of the pod (laughs) (laughs) yeah i'm here uh you may remember me from such podcasts as gen con glass cannon booth last year (laughs) yeah (laughs) when when we when we 100 did three demos in 45 minutes like i and joe we would we'd definitely get through them yeah (laughs) Just definitely didn't go 40 minutes over. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, amazing. Uh, well, Brian, we're, we're, we're thrilled to have you here because honestly, another friend of the pod tonight is Chaosium because we're going to be playing RuneQuest. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm lucky enough to work for Chaosium where my day job is to dream the dreams of dead gods and construct the world <laughs> from its essential runes. Uh, and yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> that is my job title. <laughs> um, no, so we've got basically. I, I was spamming at you guys a little while ago now uh, about the two new books that we've got coming out at, at Gen Con this year for RuneQuest, uh, which are uh, the two new books of RuneQuest cults. And if you've not played RuneQuest before, a cult, for want of a better term, is sort of like your class. Yes, I, everybody's got their copies. It's so exciting. I got mine too. I didn't know these were hot. I didn't I know, know these come out to Gen Con. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're really hot. Yeah. I'm putting mine up on eBay after this. <laughs> you, I mean, you could as as, as featured in. You know? <laughs> as featured in. A game used uh, copy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So I thought it would be really cool to um, like roll up some characters with uh, some some friends of yours, no one I know, and <laughs> and then and then play play some RuneQuest. Yes. Uh, so how does everyone feel about that? Um, it's, I, you've all played before, like Troy. I know you GM'd it once uh, on a, on a thing that you did with us, um, and Joe and. Sorry, I'm going to Josephine and Joe. Uh, I'm played, Joe and Joe. Our, Joe and Joe. 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 Here we are. Played, played Flanking you. 15 minute uh, Gen Con preview that we did. Uh, and Nora, you've played you've played with me before, but I think you've yeah. played in other things too. Yeah, right? I've also, so, yeah, I played on the one that Troy, uh, that, that he ran a little while ago. Yeah, yeah. So, now, yeah. but none of you made your own characters before. And, um, Character creation is pretty cool, like as a concept across all games. I think Hot take, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Getting to make your own thing. Um, so I'm sure my, my my point is that you all know um, you've all got some level of familiarity with RuneQuest. Now, those of you who may be watching who don't know much about RuneQuest, um, you might know Chaosium mostly from Call of Cthulhu. It's okay if you don't. Um, Call of Cthulhu uh, uses a D100 basic role playing system, which is like the Chaosium generic, like that's the backbone of all our systems. Um, if I were to describe the system of RuneQuest, it's like um, if you took the bare bones of Call of Cthulhu and gave it sort of a level of crunch akin to somewhere near Pathfinder first edition, maybe sneaking towards second. Uh, so it's a, it's a crunchier system. It's a much more brutal system, uh, but it also is a more malleable system where you can really, really grow a super unique character. Um, it, it is set in a Bronze Age fantasy setting. 
Um, you know, so whatever that conjures up of as like chariots and like gladiatorial arenas <laughs> and all kinds of other weird stuff. Uh, and it is a it is a high magic setting. And I mean that like literally every character can use magic. That doesn't mean everybody is like a robe wearing wizard who's going to like have two hit points and then drop dead. Um, <laughs> if you want to focus on spell casting while also being like a like a hardcore wrestling warrior, you could do that. Um, if you just want to have some like little spells that kick around and help you out, that's cool too. But everybody has magic, which is which is exciting. And uh, Glorantha was once described to me as if you remember when you were a kid, like 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 a six seven year old, and maybe you had like a few different action figures from different properties, but you would still play with them all together. So you'd be like, <laughs> you'd be like, here's Batman. Yeah, cool. And he's talking yeah. to Darth Vader, but also here comes a dinosaur. Like that, that is, that is <laughs> sort and of And Optimus Glorantha. Prime yeah. comes screeching <laughs> into the scene. Yeah. yeah, it's got a bit of everything and it's weird. And the core tenet of RuneQuest is a rule called your Glorantha may vary. Which is essentially <laughs> us giving you the permission to do whatever you want and keep it fresh. So, if you're a hardcore RuneQuest grognard watching this and you're about to push the glasses up the bridge of your nose and be like, oh, I don't <laughs> think ducks can do that. Like, that's cool. But, you know, this is our Glorantha. This is the friend of the pod glass <laughs> canon Glor- Glor- Glorantha. Your and Glorantha we'll make it work. may vary. <laughs> exactly. uh, phalanxes can only move ten feet per, per round. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think you'll find it's less than that, Troy. Don't be ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, well, we're gonna, I, I we're- will say, Brian, I, I, I will interrupt just to say the only RuneQuest experience I have is that 15-minute, 40-minute <laughs> demo that we did at Gen Con. And so, it was a great taste, but it really I, – I will be a kind of a noob to this, and I'm looking forward <laughs> to uh, asking dumb questions, and I hope you don't mind, as as we go through to kind of familiarize myself with the, the system. And I mean, the system seems – it's very intuitive to me. It, it makes a lot of sense. Like you said, it's it evolves out of that basic role-playing system that is very easy to understand, uh, but the depth of the world is a little – intimidating like when you start yeah. reading the lore it's like whoa uh, a lot of thought went into this and i, I appreciate uh, uh worlds like that i love deep lore and this certainly has in space and when you were like we're gonna work with some new cults books so could you choose something <laughs> from the new cults books i didn't know that there would be 30 new yeah. cults yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right it's probably even more than that it's like yeah, I think it's so wild many. how many there are yeah, so the, the new cults books have a mixture of cults that are in the core book, uh, expanded, and <laughs> brand new cults. So when we say new cults, like uh. old school RuneQuest people will remember them from 30 years ago or whatever, but mm. they're, they're new coming out. Um, and for those of you who are, who are newer to RuneQuest, one of the, the core mechanics in RuneQuest is actually the runes that you you have, your character has stats for. And each rune has, um, you know, it has lore meaning. But it also has like a uh, mechanical benefit as well. So, for instance, the higher your air rune is, the more prone to acts of mindless violence you are. But it also means the like the more sort of passionate kind of person you are in general, that kind of thing. And if your rune uh, gets like to a high percentage, like over 80, um, it's, it can actually start to um, control your character in the sense of if you have that, say, 85% air rune, which means you, you love getting in the scrum. And say you you're in the middle of a very heated debate with a rival clan, and say say Troy's got eighty five percent in his air rune. He says, "Well, you know, I think they're being reasonable, so I'm going to try and like diplomatically resolve this." I'll say, "Are you?" It sounds like that air rune might make you want to fight these people wow. instead. Wow, so, I love that. Mm, <laughs> yeah, so that <laughs> doesn't really always happen. Cool. Just something to be in mind for, because when people are like, "Oh, uh, what what do I use to cast spells?" and I tell you, "Well." your best spells, you roll your rune. And you're like, well, I want my rune to be like 90% then, which is cool. It means your spells go off 90% of the time because this is a D100 roll low system. Um, but it also means that it, it, you're going to have to think about how those things shape your character. And runes go up and down. Anyway, we'll, we'll get into all that. Uh, <laughs> Brian, I have, a, I have a quick question. Please. Let's say, let's say you were thrown in prison for life. Me personally, we don't, have to t- we don't have to talk about what you did, but you're in prison sure. for life. And the <laughs> warden comes up to your cell one day and says, Hey, Holland, that's what he calls you. Of course, uh, <laughs> he says, uh, Word has it you used to work for Chaosium before your incarceration. Uh, here's the deal we're gonna let you play one game for the rest of your life because you're in here for life, in case you forgot. <laughs> 
And he holds out Call of Cthulhu in RuneQuest. <gasps> You're gonna do this? What? Which book do you take from the Warden? Mm. Boy. I, I show him my copy of Dungeon World from 1986. No, no, I, don't, I don't know what that is. Um, look, I love Call of Cthulhu. I'm a big horror guy. I got my start in the business, in the tabletop business uh, with White Wolf doing vampire stuff. Like, I'll always love horror. Uh, and I'm not just trying to sell everybody RuneQuest by saying this. But honestly, in terms of longevity and campaign playing... I think RuneQuest is the answer. Um, so the- uh, I mean, you're going to be in prison for life. For you life. want a long campaign. <laughs> exactly. Exactly right. Um, so one of the main creators of the Elder Scrolls video game, which mm. people may have heard of, I'm not sure this, you know, um, actually cited one of their core mechanics was inspired by a core mechanic in RuneQuest. And if you've played Skyrim and you're like, oh, I've started using this bow and suddenly my bow skill has gone from zero to like 80. Um, even though you didn't select like the bow using class, that is a thing that happens in RuneQuest. So oh, awesome. you, you start, oh. you do start in RuneQuest. You'll you'll have your cult, which defines like you know a bunch of core things about your character, including weapons. Um, but if you decide you're like, oh, you know, I saw someone riding like a bison before. That sounds really cool. I might start <laughs> riding a bison. <laughs> And you can be like, yeah, cool. We'll just start doing it and practice it, and you, your your character will get better at it. Like, that's cool. Um, that's that's like a, a cool, fun thing. Yeah, uh, there so your isn't. Uh, in, correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, but there isn't levels, right? Like there aren't. You don't no. like level up. You just you increase your skills as you use things. No, e exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and the, 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 having levels is, um, I think, you know, it's a, it's a good and a bad thing. Like the the thing with RuneQuest is um, core balance is is hard to determine, which is fine for a very sort of narrative, law heavy game. Um, but it is a crunchier, more violent combat system. So, one of the things I like to point out in, in RuneQuest, it doesn't matter if you have like 60 rune, rune points and as many rune spells, which is the most powerful kind of magic. If, if, you, if you're a rune lord, like you get to the level in your cult, which is rune lord. So, there are sort of levels that you can unlock as you progress through your cult. If you're a rune lord, um, you can still get killed by taking an arrow to the eye. Like if someone shoots you in the face with an arrow, you still might die. You probably yeah. will. Like because this game also was it was one of the first games to have like hit locations. Yeah, um, so, so cool. When you, when you hit, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, really and which 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 actually translates to um, combat being very very tense uh, because there's always a chance that you might get hit in the face, uh, even if it's just by a farmer with a pitchfork. Uh, you know, that has that. happened. If, if Bill, if you're watching, I'm sorry. You're like that's that's just what happened. You should have. What happened to Joe? He got trampled by a bison. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. The one he was trying to learn to ride because it's really in the bison. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it is a yeah. It's a it's a violent, hectic system. Um, are, are there any more like just basic questions? Because then we're gonna I'm gonna start going through character creation stuff, and we're all gonna do it together, Let's, and we're all gonna grow a character it. together. Everyone sort of looked through um, their, you know, I've told everyone to have a look through the cults and get a sense of what they might like to play. I know, I know some of you have sort of already maybe locked one in, but we're still going to have a conversation about it. But <laughs> guess what? Cult selection? Step six, baby. We got plenty of time. I saw that. Right? Yeah. I saw that. And I was like, he, the only thing he told me to do is step six. This is I very know. confusing. <laughs> oh, damn. All right. So, in RuneQuest, uh, like, Glorantha is a huge, huge world. Um, but we're just going to focus on a portion of it called Dragon Pass, which is still about as big or maybe a bit bigger than the continental United States. So, it's still pretty, pretty big, right? Uh, you might know it from a video game called uh, King of Dragon Pass from the mm. 90s. You can yes. also now play oh. it on your iPhone, apparently. It inspired the core mechanic of how the um, the Banner Saga works. If everyone's ever played the Banner oh, Saga. Oh, yeah. Anyway, sorry, we don't make those games anymore. Someone else owns it. I'm not plugging it. It's just fun, so go play it. Um, <laughs> It's there a great, are a bunch of different game. homelands. Uh, so, normally when you make characters, uh, you can select the homeland that you've got. There's like six core homelands with some more. Um, but for now, for, for our game, um, I want everyone to play uh, a, a their homeland as Sata. Uh, like Sata is sort of a default homeland for okay. most of the adventurers. It's a mountainous kingdom made up of storm wor worshipping hill tribes who are united by the Prince of Sata. And uh, recently... Yeah. Have just recently, when we start the game, I mean recently, have just been liberated from the invasion of the Lunar Empire. So, the Lunar Empire is like this, um, essentially, I want you to picture like ancient Rome, but they all have like forbidden magic. Um, and so, ancient Rome, the Lunar Empire, 
invaded from the north and had been uh, basically occupying Sartar for the last, I want to say, like 20 or 30 years. And they've just recently been pushed away. So there's still some dregs of them hanging out. Um, a big deal with the Lunars is that, um, as, as their name implies, their, their god focus is that of the moon. And the moon in Glorantha is red. And it goes through all, all of its phases over a week. So it goes from full to nothing in a week over and over again. Mm. And depending on the phase of the moon, their, ma- their magic can get more powerful. Um, but the thing about the moon is the moon uh, has a level of chaos magic in it, which, which regular nice folks don't, don't like. We don't like chaos. Like, you know, mm. chaos is bad. Yeah. Um, so we're very happy to have, to have recently banished, uh, banished them. So if everyone could write down the character sheet, the homeland... <laughs> Is Sartar S A R T A R? Um, okay, done. Everyone's done that. We're doing this worksheet from home. <laughs> 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 All right. Now, another cool thing in RuneQuest: when you're playing your your full campaign, you don't start by making your own character. You start by making your grandparents, and then you <laughs> <laughs> wait. Don't don't click away. <laughs> like, just stay with me. Stay with me. You make your grandparents, and you go through these random event tables for your grandparents, which alter depending on which homeland you were. Uh, and they basically do two things. One, they give you a very rich background from your for your character, because you go from your grandparents to your parents, and then to you. And the other thing they do is they teach you about the history of the last sixty years of the setting, yeah. without you necessarily just having to read through, you know, fifty pages of setting. Now. Having learned that a 45 minute demo, uh, sorry, a 15 minute demo can become a 45 minute demo, I thought we'd maybe not get four people to do <laughs> starting at grandparents because we'll be here for some time. So, what we're going to do uh, instead. Also, is gonna- <laughs> sorry for the record, this has to be pointed out because it is in black and white on the background worksheet. It yes. says it's you're not only doing your grandparent, you there's your favored grandparent and other grandparent, <laughs> <laughs> which is Correct. so amazing that detail. <laughs> yeah, well, I think I just know like everybody has a favorite totally grandparent, you know, and it's in the back it's of your hand. You'll never verbalize it. Favorite parent too. I mean, yep, gee. and yes, exactly. other parent. <laughs> The other parents. Yeah, the, uh, the other one. Yeah. Uh, we don't need to sugarcoat things. <laughs> no. Exactly. So we're going to use our, we've, we've, um, the players at home of, uh, sorry, the players at home, every, the players in the game right now, because you're all in your homes, I assume, um, have a copy of the background worksheet, which is a form fillable PDF that you can download from chaosing.com and you can also print it out. Everyone's got that. So we're going to skip, I want to say it's like the first two thirds of that sheet and just go straight to, uh, the year 1622. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Which is the in, in the world. So, which is when your character's history begins. So, uh, in, in the year 1622, there was the Great Winter. Uh, there was the Battle of the Auroch Hills. This was when the Lunar Empire and the evil Red Emperor. I'm using evil in quotation marks because mm. they're evil from our point of view, right? As satirites. Um, the, the Red Emperor was still occupying the land. Now, so what I would like everybody to do is to take your favorite 20-sided die. Mm. I hate Ooh. all of mine. Got it. <laughs> you hate all of them. All right. <laughs> and then please roll a d20 on this event table. And because your uh, homeland is Sata, I want you to add five to it. And then I'm just going to go around the table one at a time and tell you what your event is. So once everyone's rolled that dice, added five to it. Uh, I'll start with Troy because it looks like he's rolled it already. Troy, what did you roll as your result? A gentleman's 23. <laughs> 23? <laughs> oh, of right. course. Of course. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> your event is Ascendance to Godhood. So, so your, your, your character, who all we know about so far is they are from Sata. <laughs> uh, whatever else. They fought in the Battle of the Auroch Hills. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. which, which, means, which means you know how to roll on the sub table. Yes. For the Battle of Auroch Hills. Yes. Oh, sub tables. <laughs> Let's find I out if you. Now, this is not quite OSR enough that Troy could die in character creation. <laughs> like Traveler. <laughs> yeah, like Traveler. But you can nearly die. Let's let's see what happens. All right, roll another, oh, wow. so roll another D20 for us. Do I add another five to this? Uh, uh, yes, you do. Okay. It's your Sata. Yeah. Then that's going to be a 16. 16. So you were wounded honorably in battle. Okay. So before we do anything else, get your character sheet up. Go to your, go to your battle skill. 
which is on page yes. two of your character sheet. Okay. So and you get awesome. you get you get you get plus five percent to your battle skill. Okay. And your honor. Now, quickly with the with your skills, um, cool. this doesn't make for great podcasting, but this is just so everyone knows how we're playing. Uh, your skills, just like in Call of Cthulhu, have a base chance, which is the amount in parentheses. Mm-hmm. Uh, and whenever you gain a bonus to that skill, it's in addition to the base chance. Okay, so if you're getting plus five to your battle and your battle base chance, I think is five, it means that it's ten. Does that make sense, Troy? Can you yes. find your battle skill on page two? It's going to be like 45 minutes and I will uh, <laughs> find it. I think that <laughs> is so under every knowledge, skill from does that walking sound right? to chewing gum. Yes, that's the thing. It so starts it, at it, 10, oh, so yours would now be 15, I think. Exactly. Ah, so battle, okay. To that. Sweet, and then honor. And nice. Honor. Honor is not a skill. I think it's a uh, derived attribute that's on the front page. We'll probably get to that. Oh, there it is. It's um, under passion. It's honor. Passions, so I'll just throw right. a fiver in there and see what happens. Exactly. Later. All right. So <laughs> that is, and then write that down in your character background worksheet. That's what you did in 1622. So and the result that. is that so, I was wounded honorably. Yeah, and you fought in the Battle of the Auroch Hills. Yeah, like what a what a hardcore time that was. Yeah. Uh, there was there was a, the rebel army was ambushed and defeated uh, the lunar army partially reviving Orlanth and Analda. So you partially, you you fought in this rebellious battle that partially revived the god of storms and the, the goddess of the earth. I was there. Oh. You were there. Jeez. Oh, and by the way, sorry. Really important thing about RuneQuest, the gods are just real. <laughs> I should probably sort of said that straight <laughs> up. Like they're, like they're just cults, but like the gods are literally like, they don't necessarily walk around all the time, but that, that is why there's magic everywhere. So when you join a cult in RuneQuest, it's kind of like a legit serious thing. It's sort of almost like, if you are pledging fealty to a liege lord nearby, like they are, you're not just, it's not blind faith. It's literally like, yeah, yeah, they're, they're real. Um, so that's what your character Detroit, and you can use that knowing that now for when we do our next steps in character creation, you've got a bit more flavor for what your character did. Now, Great. Uh, Nora, what did you roll for your D20 plus five? For what so happened my D20, uh, a 13. A 13. Uh, so uh, you were dealing with this great winter that happened that was 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 happening in in 1622 so can you please now roll on the sub table for what you got up to in the in the great winter don't add uh plus five to this roll but just roll a uh, d20 for me another eight an eight all right so you nearly starved to death in the great (laughs) winter however you were kept alive and what you were kept alive by is going to be determined by the roll of a d6 so can you please roll the d6 I yes. love this. So many yes. subtitles. Alive. All right, let's find out what I was kept alive by. This feels like a choose your own adventure book, right? Like we're <laughs> exactly. flipping pages. Yeah. Imagine, jo- Josephine, imagine if we'd started with your grandparents. Imagine. <laughs> 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 love it. Uh, yeah, that Nora, would be so fun. Uh, I rolled a three. A three. So you were kept alive by stealing food from <gasps> strangers. <gasps> <gasps> which me- which means you're going to gain a passion. I'm going to explain passions later and how they work. Um, but you gain a passion, and that passion, which is on the front of your character sheet, there's a section called passions. You can fill this in. Uh, you're going to gain hate, hatred <laughs> for another clan or people. Um, now we're going to do another clan here. I'm just going to get you to put in the all leaving clan, which is a, a which is another clan in Sata, uh, but they're like a, a sort of a neighboring, like clan of people and you were stealing food from them can you repeat you the name them. of their the clan? Or, or leaving o-r-l-e-v-i-n-g uh, and you were stealing their food and that's how you survived the great winter in the year of 1622 now joe o'brien what did you get for your d20 roll looks like also the great winter i got a 12 <gasps> uh a 12 well, well a 12 a 12 is also great winter Okay. I stole Joe's uh, food. Can I re-roll yeah. because I also- You're a member of the cult of or leaving. Uh, or what, right. what, did you also get a 12? I also got a 12 thing? because we're both Joe, apparently. Yes. And that's okay, what's so gonna I'll, happen. Okay. I'll, 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 I'll let you re-roll it, Josephine, but the second one will oh, yeah. stick. You, now, you jo- yeah, Joe O'Brien, can you please roll a d20 to see what happened during the Great Winter? 13. 13. You just survived, bro. Ain't nothing- Nothing to you. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> I don't get fine. any points in anything. No, no I don't you have survive. a passion for life. <laughs> no, you don't. You just oh. scrape by. You're all good. You didn't nearly starve to death. Nothing at all. You're all good. Okay. You survived the great winter. <laughs> uh, Josephine McAdam, how did you go in your role? Okay, so this time I rolled a one. Uh, so six total, yeah? A six total. Uh, you nearly died. 
That's it? Just um, Yeah, no, no, no. Well, I'm just... <laughs> and then it says, see random causes of death table on page 35. Um, so, I'm going to tell you why you nearly died. Okay. Uh, can I you nearly please... Can, did a spit take at that. <laughs> can you, you nearly you nearly died. Can you please roll a d20 and I'll tell you how you nearly died. Okay. <laughs> and this was nothing to do with the Battle of the Oracles Hills or the Great Winter. This right, was yeah. You. It was no, your uh, Car accident five or no? bonus. No bonus to this one. 15. 15. Uh, you nearly you, you were nearly killed in an accident. And it's up to you to determine what that accident was. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh, so, I, I was ready to have everything determined for me. No, no but you, well, you, I'm not going to put you on the spot and tell you to explain it right now, but you can sort of formulate that as we go. Mm. If you like. So you can write yeah, down that cool. you were nearly killed in an accident in 1622. Okay. Oh, uh, great. This is already so long ago. So um, <laughs> in the year 1623, the Israelian queen... Uh, uh, gains a new ally in uh, King Broyan, which is the the, 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 the guy that uh, Troy's character helped fight with alongside in the, the Battle of the Oroch Hills. Uh, there was a ragged army of volunteers uh, were added to the Grazeland Horse Army. So this is when, you know, the, the, the rebellion against the Lunar Army is, is really sort of kicking into gear. Um, in the north, there was a gigantic swarm of trolls, trollkin, insect and creatures of the darkness rune. Uh, they, you know, they, 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 they swarmed in. And our darkness is not necessarily evil, but, you know, there, there's all these kind of creatures. Uh, they, they were swarming all over Dragon Pass. All right. Now, let's, let's, get, some, let's get some D20 rolls now uh, for what happened in 1623. Uh, there's no bonus to this roll because um, it's just whatever you roll up. Like, so everybody, everybody roll through. We're going to try and go in the same order. Troy, what'd you get? Ooh, a three. A three. Uh, you <laughs> nearly died. Uh, <laughs> but it's just of other causes. Can you please roll a d20? Uh, another three. Another three. You were nearly killed in a personal feud with another clan. Oh. So uh, you can either gain hatred for that other clan or gain loyalty for your own clan. I'll take the hatred, please. The hatred. Okay. Can you? Can you, <laughs> uh, can you also gain hatred for the all leaving clan? Which, uh, oh. your, which uh, that's a passion on your on your, oh, your front yeah. page, yeah. Okay. We hate the same clan. We could team up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the enemy and my enemy and all that's, that. That's, that's how we managed to support. Are about, just united in your hatred of another people, uh, Brian, <laughs> which is good. Yeah. Brian, do we know like around what age we are in 1622? Oh, so, so- uh, I, I will tell you. Give me one sec. I think so, you're 21, um, aren't you? Or so is it- in, in, no, so in 1625, a default character would be 21. You okay, can be older okay. than that if you want, uh, but yeah. So that's that's. But the idea is that once we get to 1625, a default character is at least 21. Um, Nora, uh, yes. what did you roll for your d20? Yeah. A 15. A 15. Uh, oh. You, you were involved in civil strife. Can you please roll another d20? No Man. modifiers. Nine. A nine. Oh, wait, so you the were... first one I didn't add. Was I supposed to add a modifier no, to the... No, no, okay. no, no, no modifiers to either one. Yeah. All right, so uh, the civil strife, you were attacked and badly wounded by members of a rival clan. Uh, and I'm going to say it, it, it is the... Uh, the uh, hold on, let me... Let's put that in there. Oh, no, wait, no. You hate the All Leaving Clan already, don't I you? I do. Can okay, I double so hate they, them? You can, well, <laughs> you can. You can, exactly. So, you're going to... <laughs> so when, you, when you gain a passion, and I'll explain how passions work later, but when you gain a passion, the default starting value is 60%. If you were to gain that passion again, it goes up by 10 so you will hate the or leaving clan 70 percent. so you hate them more than troy does uh, <laughs> <God>. <laughs> there's a numeric that, value troy? to this hatred and yes exactly so you're attacking nearly killed for stealing their food the year before so under passion assume. i put 70 on like yes. the, that same line yeah so it should say hatred parentheses or leaving clan 70 percent. got it cool, cool, cool. yep uh, and mine Joe doesn't Brian. have a numerical value. Oh, sorry, Troy. You, yours should start at sixty percent. Oh, okay, so it starts at sixty. Sixty yeah. is not just a casual hatred. Okay, no, yeah, no, no. <laughs> it's, it's really it's like more than more than half the time you hate them. Yeah. Sixteen twenty-three. Let's see what we got. Uh, also fifteen. 
Exactly. Also, 15. also 15. So civil strife, but that means you roll a d20 on the civil strife table. Another d20, so 14 this time. 14. Uh, <laughs> you you killed a member of a neighboring clan. Oh. Who, who, who now uh, seek vengeance against you. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, oh, oh. Well, okay. <laughs> Come and try it. Uh, okay, so okay. I mean, I think I think said so, like there's already a narrative sort of developing here. So I'm just going to say that you killed a member of the your leaving clan, and now you also hate them. Okay. Okay. Nice. Okay. Uh, so that is the so you gain the hate for that rival clan. So that starts at sixty percent. Okay. Uh, and you can think about the situation in which this came up and why you killed them. Um, you know, maybe as we, uh, we we grow and we continue creating characters and we're deciding how we know each other, maybe you you can tie your backstories together there, if you like. Or you yeah. can just be like a rogue agent. You're like, I just ran into him in the street. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Whatever you want to do. All right, Josephine McAdam, did you get your D20 roll? Let's see yes, if you also killed w- or nearly killed someone. Yeah, right. Also, yeah. my accident that I nearly died in was a rhino yeah. stampede. Just to- Okay, <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. That right. would nearly kill you. I figured. I was going to say Flamingo Stampede, and then I was like, I don't think that they weigh that much, do they? Uh, Gloranthan Flamingos are huge. Okay. So, <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, well, in that case. In our Gloranthan, you can totally say that you nearly died It was died a, in a Flamingo, flamingo stampede, stampede because I wanted okay. to be kind of fabulous. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I rolled an 18. You rolled an 18. Uh, you fought in the Siege of Notchit. Notchit? Notchit. Notchit is the capital of Israelia, the matriarchal society just to the south of Sata. Ooh. And there, there was a siege where like the like the Lunar Empire was trying to like lay seed there. So the, you now get to awesome. roll on another table for the siege of Notchit. And because you're from Sata, please add five to okay. this roll. So while everybody else was squabbling with the neighbors, <laughs> this means characters was off fighting the good fight. What did you get? Six. Oh, you rolled a nat one. Yeah, I did. <laughs> okay. However, so you survived. So oh. please add 5% to your battle skill. Okay. But however, this does mean that automatically you were oh, drafted no. into the Battle of the Penal Ford in 1624. <laughs> <laughs> so when we get to 1624, you you won't have to roll to see if you fought at the Battle of the Penal Ford. You just did. Okay. 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 Hold on. Hold on. I, I, yeah. Okay. First, I fought in the Siege of Natchez and then... I I got drafted into what? The Battle of Pennell Ford. P E N N E L Ford, like the car, or the you know water thing. All right, you know. <laughs> the water thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yes, plus five to your battle skill. Another right, plus five? One. No, just no, no, one. Yeah, so you got the you got the flat plus five. Okay. Got it. All right, wow. sixteen twenty four. This is our last year. Maybe we should have started with our grandparents. This is fun. This is the <laughs> I, game. I we agree. We just roll on tables and see what happens. <laughs> All right. I did everybody for 1623, right? Yeah, that's yep. good. Yes. Um, okay. A bunch of stuff happened in um, in 1624. A new planet appeared in the sky. That was pretty dope. Uh, it popped out. <laughs> but, it, but the new appearance of this new planet prophesied doom and rage. Uh, there was a guy named Harak the Berserk who had a group of wolf pirates who invaded the holy country. Now, I know what you're thinking. Are they wolves who are also pirates? <laughs> Canon? No, that's just the name. But our Glorantha varies and these were anthropomorphic wolf people <laughs> who are also pirates. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just, that's how we know. Um, there was a, there was a, the, the uh, King, uh, Queen Samastina and King Broyan routed the lunar army at the Battle of the Penal Ford, which is where Josephine's character was fighting. And a bunch of other stuff was going on too. So I'm going to ask everybody to roll a d20 to see what their basic... Well, sorry, everybody except Josephine, who definitely fought the Battle of Penal Ford. Please roll the first d20. So we'll start with Troy again. Uh, Nine. You rolled a nine. Uh, You gain a random boon. Yes. Uh, Page 40. Uh, can you roll a d20 to see what your random boon is that you gained last year? Four. Four. You fall in love. What? <gasps> Please gain the gain the love passion, and you get to choose who that person is. Now we can we can decide. You can leave it blank for now, and as we develop characters, you can decide who that is uh, later. But you basically you gain the love parenthetical okay. specific person sixty percent. 
Oh, great. So I hate yeah. a specific clan, but I love a yeah, maybe, certain person. Maybe, maybe, maybe you love someone from that clan, too. How well, that's what I was thinking. You're, you're, yeah. you're, 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 you're such <laughs> a complex person. Yeah, exactly. So complex. Margaret or leaving. Margaret. <laughs> <Yeah>. Star-cross <laughs> Star Star lovers. Leaving. I like where this yes. is going. Okay, Nora, can you please roll a d20? No modifier for this one. I, I rolled a three. You rolled a three? Ugh. Yes. Uh, you nearly died <laughs> of random Man. causes. Has that happened to you twice? <laughs> no, you nearly you nearly starved to death. Uh, that you? happened to Troy that was a rolled a three. Thing. Right, on yeah, a, okay. On one. Yeah, on a different uh, but thing. I nearly starved to death first, and now I, I nearly. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, could you repeat mm. that? I nearly. Uh, you just nearly died, died again? from a random cause random of death. Event. Yeah, but, but you need to roll a d20 to see how you nearly died. Okay, so roll another d20. <laughs> They're mostly nearly died. Ten. Yes. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, it is the Bronze Ten. Age, after all. Dysentery. <laughs> okay. uh, you were nearly killed by a member of one of the elder races. Now, the elder races are the 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 the, the ancestral, really <laughs> magical creatures that populated Glorantha before sort of humans came around. They are the Eldriami, which are sort of dryad elves, the beast men, dragon newts, which are sort of like half dragon lizard people, I like uh, that dwarves, one. trolls, tusk riders. So which which and so which one do you want to be near, nearly killed by? Uh, I think I think the the dragon newts, is that what you did? Okay. <laughs> yeah, so that is that is an anthropomorphic like lizard person. And I mean yes. full blown like they can't really speak human language because they have the throat of a lizard. So, okay. uh, but they have like dragon blood in them uh, and they still That's hang fun. out sometime, but you, you gain hatred for dragon newts. So you hate <laughs> dragon newts 60%. And you're getting I, all these hates and I passions. mostly hate those guys. Yeah, which is funny, Josephine, because you're the one that's fought in two battles now, and you're like, you know, but they're just, they're I'm just cool. people, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, we're just <laughs> like, so neutral. Uh, okay, uh, who are we up to? Joe O'Brien. Joe O'Brien. 16 uh, 20, 24 event. Natty 17. No bonus Nat, this time, but that is Nat, a Natty Nat, 17. Nat 17, uh, you also fought in the Battle of Penal Ford alongside hey. Josephine's character. Hey, How hey. good's that going to be? That's going to be exciting. <laughs> All right, so let's let's do yours first. Uh, because you're from Sata, please add 10 to the roll for your Battle of Penal, Penal Ford event table. Uh, 13. 13. Uh... <laughs> You were nearly killed in battle. So add plus five percent to your battle score. Okay. And gain a distinctive scar. So you get to choose how you nearly die, nice. and you get to add, you know. Okay. Now, Josephine, I'm now going to get you to roll on the battle oh, of Penal Ford. Table. I get a result. Okay. So is this a and d20? D20 plus ten, and if you roll a thirteen, like Joe just did, just just re-roll it. All right. Let's re-roll that bad. All right. Okay, so plus 10 is 19. Uh, okay, so you fought with great glory. Yeah. Gain honor. So you can either gain honor or devotion to a deity. You can choose choose one. You can either gain the honor passion at 60% or gain devotion to a specific deity, which is a god, which we can choose later. Um, the cool thing about doing that is like you will join when you join your cult you automatically will gain a passion of devotion to that god so you could choose a different god you know you can you can have multiple cults and multiple devotions in, uh, oh. in request uh, or you can choose to gain to gain honor which is a 60% thing which you can call upon probably more often oh god um, um, <laughs> uh, it would be kind of fun to have more than one god right Let's devotion let's, to more than one god. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do. Let's do that. Devotion okay. to a deity, and we can add that in. Add. We can add. We can choose the specific god later. Uh, but that's at sixty okay. percent to that. So where would I uh, put that? Uh, passions on the front page of your character sheet. Passions. passions. Okay. However, also because you fought with great great glory, add ten percent to your battle. Oh yeah. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Uh, We're just over here dying. I know. <laughs> like, I, I guess we stink. <laughs> Josephine's character is ah, top of the I mean, hill, holding the bronze died. sword aloft. <laughs> From a flamingo stampede. Then I got my life into shape. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 60 on the god. Wait, was I supposed to put a number on the passion for the god? Yes, 60%. Yeah. 
six great uh, right. and now now please choose uh, so you gain so roll a d6 as well you got a lot of things oh wow oh, okay. yeah because you fought with great glory Oh, great! Yeah, glory. lots of things. Everyone, well, this everyone is great knew. because none yeah. of the other ones gave me anything. So, yeah, okay. oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> you're due. No, no, no. Yeah. This is good. So D six. Okay, I got a one. Okay, so you add one percent to your character's reputation, <laughs> which is which is a thing that goes up over the course of a campaign as you accomplish great deeds. Everyone's like, "Hey, remember that? Remember that 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 guy?" <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I, I think so. Yeah. So my <laughs> reputation is just one. One percent. Everyone else is a zero, though. So. Right. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> you're, yeah, you're going to be the most zero. One you guys are going to have to drag yeah. me through this whole thing. Yeah. One, <laughs> one is exponentially better than zero when it comes to reputation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Now you also have to pick whether you accompanied Agrath to Jaldon Golden Tooth, or <laughs> if you aided Harak the Berserk in sacking the City of Wonders. How do you choose? Yes. I know. Yes. I'm asking you, what did your character do? Did you did you go along with Agrath, the prince, to Jaldon Golden Tooth's summoning, or did you aid Harak the Berserk in sacking the City of Wonders? I refuse to explain further. Okay, well, I just have one. I've got one important question. It's like, how attractive is the prince? That's fair. Important question. Very important. Do you want to know, like, in comparison to Harak the Berserk? <laughs> like I'm like the prince is a good looking guy, but Harak the Berserk. Woo, you know, like, oh really? <laughs> uh, sure, in our Garantha, yeah, Harak the Berserk is like a really <laughs> okay, well, significant. It's like a really it's a point of contention at court. Everyone's whispering, it's like, wow, Harak is so much hotter than the prince. You know? <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. Um, I follow the hottie then, Harak. Harak the Berserk. To he makes the, the prince look wonders. like an LA six. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. All right. Can you now please roll a d20 to see what happens so when you, you sack s- the city of wonders? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. How much more exciting would this be if this was actually just happening to your favorite grandparent? <laughs> <laughs> or the other grandparent. Exactly. Okay. So, the other so, is fine. Wait, let me write down what have I done? I have followed Herrick the Berserk? Yeah, to sack the city of wonders. <laughs> Okay, that sounds so terrible. It does. <laughs> but I'm sacking the city of but he's, wonders. He's glistening, glistening with like sweat as yeah. he does it. He looks great, you know. Well, and you, you know, it's life experience. Yeah, exactly, you know. Okay. Um, keep not. Okay, there we go. 14. What you... 14. Uh, okay, so you were cursed by guardians of the city of wonders and nearly killed by spirits. Gain gain 10% to your spirit combat, which is a skill called spirit combat when you that go into like the spirit world and you fight with your, literally just your soul. <laughs> However, also please roll a d6. Oh my God. Okay, hold on. Spirit combat, spirit combat's <laughs> getting 10 added? Plus 10%, yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, <laughs> and this is because I, the spirit... I was cursed. I got cursed. You were by the cursed guardians of by the, the city of wonders. Yeah, which means you fought them. Like you literally, like curses are very real. They're tangible. Awesome. So you, awesome. you, you learned from that. Now please roll a d6. Two. Okay, you got 200 lunars worth of plunder. Lunar is like the standard, like, currency. So you get 200 lunars added to your character sheet. You just usually <sighs> abbreviate it to 200 L. So you had a good time. So rich Damn, and yeah. famous. Yeah. <laughs> right. a good start. Mm-hmm. Strong start. Great. All right. So lastly, all right, we're getting through this. All right. 1625 was the year that the, the battle turned against the Lunar Empire. And that was because the dragon rise happened. So in like the stretch of mountains and dragon pass, there was like the city where the Red Emperor was hanging out the whole time. And from underneath that city, a dragon was birthed from inside Glorantha and exploded out like this massive, huge, massive and huge. Wow, look at me, I'm a writer. Um, <laughs> exploded out of the of the the mountains and destroyed much of the lunar army just as it erupted. And this event was called the Dragon Rise. And it was sort of since then that the, the lunar army was routed and they've sort of fled back to the north. But there's still some pockets of lunar lunar activity. Troy, can you roll a d20 just to see? What you might have been up to. Oh, man. Most uh, of this year. Two. 
You fought against the Praxians in the liberation of Pavis, which is all across, <laughs> like across the desert in the land of, in the land of Prax, where all the bison riders live. <laughs> Circling back, you fought, you fought um, in the liberation of Pavis, which is their, their capital city. Can you please roll another d20 and add five to it? Okay. Uh, 25. Nat 20. Whoa. Oh, nat 20! There it is. Okay, all right. So it's higher you better? Were, I don't know. Because, you know, the Lunas, <laughs> the Lunas were in, the Lunas were in Pavis, and you, like, went, you went to, across the desert, you went all the way, it's a long way. I'll show you a map one time. It's a long way. You went there, you went there to fight the Lunas, and you rolled really high, right? Yep. So you were nearly, ki- sorry, you were temporarily driven insane by Lunar Demons. Let's go. <sighs> Yeah. When the Praxians <laughs> came to Dragon Pass to destroy the new Lunar Temple. Oh my god, yes. So, like, Lunar, because de- remember, like, the Lunar magic is all about messing with people's minds and summoning demons and stuff, which is, which is pretty hectic. Uh, so, please gain hatred, 60%, for the <laughs> Lunar Empire. Oh my god. <laughs> I feel like that would be a default for everybody. Like, most of you are like, ah, oh, like, they were here, then they weren't, so it's, it's cool, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, and also get plus 10% to your spirit combat. Oh, beautiful. Mm. Uh, Lunar Empire 60. Okay. okay. Very cool. Nora, Nora, can you please roll a d20? Okay. Now, these dragon, this, this dragon thing that, yeah. that popped up, are these the same dragon people that I have a 60% hatred for? Uh, it's like the most ancient version of one because it's literally like the size of a skyscraper, like erupting out of the mountains, then gotcha. flying around the sky. Okay. So you went stoked. I, I hope this is good. <laughs> what, did you, what did you roll? I hope this is good. I need something good because I, I am I am starving and angry. <laughs> so I rolled, I'm hangry. I rolled a twelve. You rolled a twelve. Uh, where is that? Uh, you witnessed the dragon rise, so you were there, and you survived. Importantly, um, and if I then died, you this would be a short game. And and then. <laughs> Then you participated in the liberation of Sartar. So Ooh. you were there when the dragon rose, and then you were like, quickly take up your sword or whatever it was, then go and go and fight. So can you please uh, roll a d20 to see what happened when you fought in the liberation of Sartar to nice. the final battle to get the Lunas to leave? 14. 14. You witnessed uh, Kalia Starbrow uh, acclaimed as Prince of Sartar in Boltholm. So you saw the Prince of Sartar, who is a woman, uh, get crowned as the new prince. You were there. So please gain the passion loyalty to Sata. Mm. 60% and plus five to your battle skill. Oh, hey now. Okay. <laughs> All right. <Exactly. laughs> Things are looking <laughs> Things up are looking for up. Nora's character. <laughs> All right. I, hang on. Uh, so it's a, it was, you said battle was yep. five percent? Yes, exactly. So that starts. Uh, at, so that's at fifteen now, and then passion was loyalty. Loyalty to Sata. So lo- loyalty parentheses Sata sixty percent. So loyalty to your country. Uh, Joe O'Brien, did you get that D twenty roll happening? Yeah, let's get it. Let's get it. Natural twenty. There it is. Ooh, so you, natural you, twenty. <laughs> you also participated in the liberation of Pavis across the desert. That's where we met. That's where yeah, we, all, we all met in 1625. Let's see if you were also tormented by lunar demons. Can you roll another d20, please? Add Wait a minute. to the roll. Yeah. Natural the- <laughs> one. <laughs> Natural one? Really? Really. Uh, you, were, you, were, you were sold into indentured servitude? <sighs> Your game is over. You, oh, you, it says here, oh, it, says, no. No, it's, it says here you may have later escaped. Let's just say you did escape. <laughs> so, <laughs> you should be my butler. This is, this is awful. Is awful. <laughs> Nora's up there Joe, just like Joe, watching Joe. the prince get crowned. <laughs> I'm being dragged so, away in chains like, no, uh, no. So, so uh, we're going to say you did escape rather than the other option, which is you starting the game sort of in indentured servitude to a villain. Um, so please gain <laughs> hatred, hatred lunar empire. 80%. Oh, you know. Oh, it. yeah. Specifically 80. 80. Yeah, you know yeah. it. Are you kidding? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a passion on the first page. And Josephine McAdam, your, uh, your last uh, 1625 event. Just a D20. Just a D20, unmodified for the first one. 19. Oh my gosh. 
Uh, you also participated in the liberation of Pavis I'm never across the desert. Not fighting. I'm never not fighting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you're so chill. All right. So can you now roll another d20 on the liberation of Pavis table? Let's see if you were sold into indentured servitude or tormented by demons or fourteen. Uh, you fought with great glory. <laughs> 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 Come on, man! Uh, so, gain, gain, gain honor sixty percent. Did you take honor already? No, I didn't. I took okay, the god. So, Nate, so you get honor sixty percent. Uh, add ten percent to your battle. Okay. <laughs> and you get to have a distinctive scar. Nice. As well. And can you roll a D three, please? A D- a D3? Oh, shit. Yeah, so that's uh, uh, one. Yeah, you know. Uh, what is the. It's the Loon. What? Empire? The L- lunar. L U N A R. So, like, lunar is in, like, the moon. Okay. The the moon. That's, yeah, that's the what I thought moon. it was. Okay. Yeah. Uh, two. Add 2% two to your reputation. <sighs> oh, man! <laughs> So what's fun, so when reputation works, if you meet like an NPC, the GM will like roll a D100 and see if they get equal to or under your character's <laughs> reputation to see if they've heard of three. you. Three. But yeah, they've got a 3% chance to know Josephine's character, but a zero for everybody else's. So let's just- <laughs> 3%? That's, That's amazing good. though. That's amazing. Okay. There's and literally that, that, a 0% chance they've heard of you. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty <laughs> sad. No bells. So it's like, no, that guy, you know, he, he went all the way across the desert, like, you know, with the bison riders. He got tormented by demons. No, nothing. No, no, no. <laughs> Never no, heard of him. I it. also <laughs> love <laughs> that, like, I fought in all of these battles, still zero hate, zero passion. <laughs> yeah. No, you have <laughs> honor. You have, you've, you, you, you gained honor as a passion. Yeah, right? honor. There's no hatred or love. Yeah. Sure, sure. No, no hatred or love is what I mean. Yeah, no. Oh, uh, sure, sure. Yeah. No, no like, loyalty. strong <laughs> feeling about. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't gain loyalty either to your to your people or country, so you're just completely mercenary, really. You just did yeah. it for the love of the game. Like, yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> Alright, so we're now that's we've done our background stuff, right? Does everyone have maybe now a better sense of where their character came from and what they're doing? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It's exciting. Alright. So now I'm just gonna before we move on, I'm gonna ask everybody one thing. Do you want to play a human or do you want to play a non human? Now I would like it, it'd be cool if at least two of you were still human. I know, Nora, yes, you get your hand up. You had thought about playing something. Nora, what would you like to do? Uh, I'd you- like to play an elf, please. An <laughs> Eldriami. Okay. Now, the elves the elves in RuneQuest are um, really kind of more like sort of like dryad people. Um, like they sort of, you know, look like this. Some different, like they're all different oh, sort of forest cool. creatures. Thing. Nice. Uh, so I'm going to, so please put on your character sheet somewhere where you like that you are, you are an elf and you get to choose uh, if you want to be a brown elf or a green elf. Hmm. Uh, let's do green elf. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that just sort of determines the color of the leaves. I think that you sprout maybe. I don't know. Yeah. It's completely up to you. <laughs> That's cool. I want to be I'm a more sentient like a ooze. spring, more of a spring than an autumn. Okay. Yes, okay, cool, yeah. cool, cool. All right, so you note that. So that's going to change some of your rune stuff, which is what we're up to now. So doing our rune, our rune affinities. Um, so there are two types of runes on your character sheet. There are elemental runes uh, and there are, um, what are the other ones called? Power runes. I think they're called power runes. Based on, so the elemental runes are... Uh, darkness, to have a strong affinity with darkness is to be cold, cruel, patient, and secretive. Uh, there's water, to have a strong affinity with water is to be mercurial, capricious, and mutable. Uh, earth is to be pragmatic, prudent, worldly, and sensual. Uh, fire or sky uh, means to be pure, chaste, idealistic, and perceptive. Air is to be passionate, violent, proud, and unpredictable. And moon is uh, is to seek spiritual liberation from the bondage of fear and ignorance. <laughs> and then there are power and form runes. Uh, so, bear in mind, now uh, each of you have sort of looked at some of the cults that you, you'd like yeah. to join. Yeah. To be able to join that desired cult, you need to have 50% in one of the runes associated with that deity. Oh. Um, so I'm happy now if you would like. So if you've all sort of pre-selected one, it's, it's, it's you know, we, we can always go back and change it a bit. Um, 
But just keeping that in mind, so the, the higher the rune fit ratings are, the better your adventure adventure is going to be at using your cult's rune magic, really. So, D- did you already the important thing. like choose? One. I'm between two, so I don't know if like uh, the assignment was to come with three. And so I, I have yeah. three. <laughs> okay, I have th- I have three too, Joe. I just you the know with my history, Josephine. with my history, I think two would make more sense. <laughs> no, yeah, I have one that I really want to do. I just I have the one, other. Yeah. I have the other two in case you know uh, Brian says I'm not only from these books. Okay, cool. Okay. Uh, so mine are all the- weird. <laughs> You're all weird. <laughs> okay, that's good. Yeah, mine well, are weird too. Let's chat about that now because that's what we're here to do with, the, with these books. So let's um, let's go let's go Josephine. You said you were between two. Were they were they both from one book or are they from? Um, I think they're from one of each. Okay, so one is Babister Gore. Okay, these are the Earth goddesses. Babister Gore is dope too. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's one, the one that yeah. I picked. <laughs> Really? Okay. Well, it's so, so I'll do, it's so so I'll do the other one then. If you're, if that's the one you really like, I have, and oh, I have sorry. two others. So who is your other one? My other one is Gagarth. Oh, that was Gargarth. one of mine. Yeah. Okay. But take <laughs> Gagarth. Gagarth. Where is Babista Gore? So Babista Gore is on page forty-nine of the Earth Goddesses. Of the book. Earth that Goddess. That is correct. Yeah. So she's known as the avenging daughter. Yeah. Uh, of 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 the Earth Mother. Her axe wielding warrior women are the sacred guardians. Of the temples of Ernalda and the other earth goddesses, they defend temples and hunt down kin slayers, oath breakers, and other vile criminals whose actions have harmed the temples they guard. Uh, she's she's pretty cool. That's that's the beast of gore. <laughs> yeah. There, she's yeah. like this weird creature. Um, okay, but there are some there are most some cults have some restrictions. Um, we're happy to waive these. It, technically, um, the beast of gore is like a, an all women cult of warrior women. Um, uh, we're happy because our Glorantha can vary. If you if you want to not be a woman and be in, I'm giving Joe that one. Cult, that's fine. Yeah, so that's, that's Joe. Joe's going to do that one. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'll take um, but Beast of I feel like this is the this is the what is her sub? I see that the, the avenging metal. daughter. I feel like I've been through enough shit that I okay. I'm pretty yeah. angry. I have <laughs> okay, a lot of people cool. I hate, and I'm ready to avenge uh, those. Yeah, who have, uh, yeah. And I don't feel that strongly. I don't hate anyone after my okay. battle. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You're like, what's wrong? Battle's a great so way to get reputation. It's, it's written down, but her symbols here are death and earth. So they're the two you need to keep in mind. You need to right. have one of those two at at least 50, but the higher they are, the better you're going to be using Babista Gore's magic. So keep that in mind. And the other mechanical stuff for Babista Gore we'll do later. Uh, okay. So Josephine, so what I was the other do one you had? Ga- Gagarth, is that how you pronounced? I think Page it's 91. Gar- Page 91 of the Earth Goddesses book? No, no, Lightbringers. Oh, oh gosh. Ooh. All right, page 91 of the Lightbringers book. Yeah, and I really like this dude. <laughs> oh, Gag- uh, Gagarth. Yeah, I wrote down guy. in my notes, because I made little notes, I wrote down senseless violence, and I was like, yeah, that yeah. sounds right. <laughs> so Ga- Gagarth is the wild so like hunter, to- and he rides across all the world seeking lost or lonely spirits as food for his hunt. He rides a <laughs> demon Amazing. steed. He rides a demon steed that gallops upon air, land, or sea, and he is armed with a long-reaching barbed spear. His companions include slavering spirit wolves and a howling crowd of dead followers. So that's, that's pretty cool. cool. That's pretty good, Josephine. Yeah. It's pretty so good. Your, it's pretty so awesome. his, his runes are... Uh, what's he got? I feel like I met like some of his dead followers when I was spirit battling the guardians of the City of Wonder or something, you know? Oh, oh yeah, for sure. Easily. Easily done. Okay, so he's got, he's he's got, death, air, yeah. and another one that I'm and disorder. To I think disorder rune. Oh shit, yeah. that's hardcore. All right, so keep in mind. So one of those three, you want you you want to be your your disorder. Great. Disorder Sorry, rune. Troy. But no, please. I have great plenty. choice too. Well, let's let's pivot then to Troy. What did, what's what were your other? Did you have some other? Uh, there were two that I really liked that are probably pretty obvious. Um, <laughs> Urimal. The trickster. Oh, the trickster guy. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then Dakafal, the judge of the dead. Oh, okay. I yeah. knew it. Uh, that I was knew. one of my other ones, the judge of the dead. And the yeah. artwork for the that judge of the cool. dead is so good. I mean, this artwork is insane for yeah. all of these yeah, so, deities. So yes. All the, all I saw, the... I saw Yermo and I was like, Troy's going to pick that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little front door for me, Yermo. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So let's let's just have a quick look at Ermel before we decide. So Ermel is on, on page, page 50 of the Lightbringers book. Uh, that, that's him there being being super tricksy looking. Uh, he has <laughs> also, yeah. Um, 
He's got the disorder rune, and then he's got the illusion rune twice. He's like doubling down Ooh. on the illusion rune. He's a real trickster. Uh, so the trickster is the armed with divine energy and power. The troublemaker is a jester and a fool and his tricks alerting the world in unforeseen ways. His pranks have seemingly equal chances to create or destroy. He's a fun, he's a fun guy. Um, I think they're noted as, you know, if we're going to get technical and like uh, munchkin about it, they're, they're, they're like, I think one of the only cults that can start with the invisibility spell, which Ooh. is pretty cool. Uh, and what was the other one is Duck of The other one is Duck of And the only reason I'm, I'm leaning that way is that from what I've rolled in my history, he doesn't seem like a trickster. Uh, oh, your character, mm, yeah. yeah. So even, Duck even, of yeah. even the Judge yeah. of the Dead might not be right, but is is the the judge i love that art. so cool. cool so all the art in these books is by the wonderful loic mitzi uh he, he's really brought done a great job bringing all these gods and goddesses and uh they they gods to to life uh the cult of duck of is an integral link to the cosmic structure it supports the reality of human mortality by worshiping the judge of the dead and by drawing upon the dead for the strength in life at the same time the cult provides the basic barriers to help protect weak humans from mighty powers uh, and Duckerfell has the man rune twice, and oh, what's that other one? As do uh, I. As do as do you. The other one, uh, that's another form rune, I think, which is. I don't see it on the sheet. The hell symbol is that? Oh my gosh! Did I break the game? Oh you probably my gosh! Did. There's probably some hardcore rune that is like not in anyway. The man is rune is the Ducca? good one for you to have. D a d a k a f a l. Yeah, it's Ducca man Fall. and spirit, right? Is it, oh, the spirit rune. There you go. Did I take a lot of shit? <laughs> yeah. This is what I wrote down for everything. How Great. come How come the spirit rune, for example, I don't see on the character sheet? Like I see. So, most of the so others. there are, there is like a rune for almost everything. So for Got instance, it. Nora, Nora is playing an Aldriami. So Nora's um, primary rune is going to be plant. So she's going to remove the man rune. Uh, from her sheet and replace oh. it with plant. Okay. Ah, yes. Okay. Yes. This is my thought behind this. Why? I'm, I'm just also, looking Troy. At- Troy, before you dive into it, I also just wanted to say I got to point out. I mean, not, the artwork's amazing, but like it's because when you meet the Judge of the Dead, you see yourself. Yes, his right. face he just is has a mirror, a mirror <laughs> face. Mirror face. <laughs> yeah. It's so cool. Which well, is very is, cool. This is what I'm thinking. Looking at my history, I, I fought in the Battle of Oryx Hills and I was wounded uh, honorably. And then I nearly died. Uh, I was nearly killed in a personal feud. Uh, all right, I fell in love. Something happened there. But then I was temporarily, temporarily driven insane by lunar demons. So I've been at the brink of death. And then mm. I think this, this insanity uh, caused me to see the world in a different way, where the veil between life and death is now blurred. And so he sees things differently. And so I, I think there's a, a way that I could make uh, Dakafa work. Okay. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Uh, so is, is that everybody locked one in except for Nura? Yes? Yes. Yes. Now, uh, now, there is sort of a default one. There's no reason you can't choose a different one. But I think that you were ex- excited for War Trees. <laughs> I did. I yeah, saw yeah. War Trees and I, you know, <laughs> it's like, uh, yes. Sorry. So for the uninitiated, what, what, what Nora is referring to there is the, um, the Cult of Eldriah, which is page 28 of the Earthbringers book. Of the, sorry, the Earthbringers. Of the Earth Goddesses book. Um, the artwork's really cool for this yes, one. Yes, yeah. So Eldriah. Oh, yeah. Um, and the elves are known as the Eldriami. So they're all sort of birthed uh, from Eldriah. She's the goddess of the woods. She rules in all regions where trees dominate, including evergreen forests. Uh, d- D- deciduous woodlands and tropical jungles. She commands yeah, everything in the woods. That's kind of one I went. Uh, exactly. That's kind of one I went with, like the green elf vibe. Yes. Nice, nice. Yes. Uh, so her her um, her uh, runes are earth, plant, and fertility. Uh, those are the three things. But you know uh, what Nora is referring to there with the war trees is that there is sort of a unique spell that the Aldriami or the, the followers of the Eldriah cult get, uh, which is sort of to animate trees and make them turn them into wood warriors. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Brian, can I just ask uh, just game history? Like these sure. runes are really cool that there's like a rune to symbolize each concept, elemental or power or whatever. How far yeah. back do these runes go? Like, are these from a rune quest from 78 or whatever? Yes. Like, yeah. Or, so uh, are uh, they updated? Greg, Greg Stafford, who was the founder of Chaosium, 
uh, who created Glorantha. Uh, and uh, he, so he's the founder of Chaosium, but he's also a visionary game designer. In, in tabletop game design world, there's a rule called, there's a, there's a concept called the Stafford Rule, which is whenever you think you've come up with a new game mechanic, you need to check to make sure Greg Stafford didn't actually come up with that game mechanic 40 years ago. Uh, I never, unfortunately, Greg, Greg Stafford passed away a few years ago. Um, I never got the chance to meet him, but I've heard nothing but amazing stories about him. And for the uh, guy who created the uh, the world of Glorantha, uh, everything I've heard about is his personal life as like a practicing shaman um, and all that kind of stuff. All, it all checks out. Like he was, you know, I'm not sure what he was up to in the 70s, but you know, it was he was he was definitely uh, on some sort of vision quest. Uh, and uh, he uh, he passed away in a sweat lodge. Um, and I think that really tells you everything you need to know. Like uh, he was, uh, you know, yeah, a lovely man uh, by all accounts. But yes, he 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 conceptualized Glorantha completely. Um, he, he says it just came to him fully formed. Uh, we actually did a, uh, an ad that some of our, some people might have seen that uh, Josephine actually did the voiceover for. And uh, what Josephine read in that was a poem written by Greg Stafford about his experience creating Glorantha. He said she just like, it just walked into me and then it was just all out there. So he wow. liked to say he discovered Glorantha, but yeah. So all the <laughs> runes and stuff, that's all created by Greg Stafford dating back to, and there's been no new ones added as far as I know. That's, that's just all amazing. since since 40 years ago. Huh. Uh, okay, so we're gonna we're gonna assign some numbers to your your various runes. Um, so you need to choose, uh, so out of your elemental runes, um, which are the uh, one sort of like in that circle in your character sheet, uh, which are darkness, water, earth, fire, air, and moon, you need to choose three. So you wanna choose a primary rune, a secondary rune, and a third rune. Now your primary rune starts at 60%. Secondary rune is 40% and the third one is 20 and all the other elemental runes start at zero unless they're otherwise raised. Now, so choose those now and bear in mind that you need to have at least 50% in one of your your uh, cult's runes uh, going. But yeah, I mean, they don't have again? to be elemental, right? Correct, because most cults have more than one rune. Uh, now, Nora, because you're a, an elf and these are the... So the the rules for creating non-human adventurers are in the Glorantha bestiary. Okay. Uh, you can be, you could be, yeah, uh, Nora decided to be an elf. You could also be a troll. You could be a baboon. You could be a duck. Uh, all that kind of stuff. You know, like li like literally Wait. like Donald Duck. <laughs> I need like, to play a duck <laughs> in the next game. <laughs> yes. So we're, we're assigning three numbers at 60. What were the other two? Uh, s uh, 60, 40, and 20. And that's across all of the room, the power no, just, and elemental. Just, no, just to the elemental ones. Oh, so okay. choose yes. will we get elemental. a chance to assign uh, oh, over oh, yeah. fifty to a power? Okay. Yeah, you will. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, now, sorry, where, where do you find which rune <laughs> that you have to go sixty in? Uh oh oh, the one you have to go sixty. Which which, which one are you, are you doing? Doctor Fall, man, I, right? Man, man and so that's spirit. The man. So you don't and have it's... to put sixty in any particular elemental. You can just ah, choose. Yeah. Okay. Because we're gonna do those in a second. Yeah. 60, 40, uh, and, 20. Okay. So, and uh, Nora, Nora will get to your plant rune in a second. Okay. But otherwise, everything else is the same for you. So once everyone's done that, um, and please note that if you, because you're all from Sartar, you also get a bonus of 10% to your air rune, regardless of whether or not you pick your air rune. Oh. Yeah. So if you do pick your air rune, that means your air rune will go up to 70% or whatever. It, it's a oh. bonus. Okay. Uh, you said by 10%. Okay. Nice. It I did, did si I, I did 60 moon, 40 darkness, 20 water. Okay. <laughs> I'm going, so it's 70 air, 40 earth, 20 darkness. Munchkin. Uh, Munchkin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to remember what, what the darkness, water, and moon were, elements were. Uh, oh, what, uh, oh, what they, what they yeah. mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so darkness is um, to be cold, patient, cruel, and secretive. Okay. Water is mercurial, mutable, and capricious. What was the other one? Moon. Yeah. Mo moon is to seek spiritual liberation from the bondage of fear and ignorance. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, which is the Lunar Empire's whole thing. Because um, they're misunderstood, okay. maybe. We'll know. go We'll go there. <laughs> okay, so I think I'm going to go 60 Earth, 40 Moon, and I'll bump up the 30 Air. Okay. Excellent. And now for the other ones, which are your power and form runes. So these ones, um, you, you'll notice are all in pairs on your character sheet. So you've got harmony and disorder, stasis and movement, truth and illusion. You know, these are all opposites. Fertility and death, man and beast, or in Nora's case, plant and beast. 
Um, these are so the, the sum of these two, the each pair, always equals one hundred. So if one goes to if one goes from twenty five to twenty six, the other one goes from seventy five to seventy four. That makes sense. They always they, they they go up and down. Yeah, you with me so far? Mm-hmm. Right. So you're going to choose from your power and form runes. Choose two different affin- affinities to start with a value of seventy five, which means the opposite one starts at twenty five. All of the other runes are going to be at fifty fifty. So Troy, you 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 for your duck of fell cults, you want a high man rune mm-hmm. so i think you probably choose the the man beast pairing so you choose man 75 beast uh oh, that's uh, so cool 20, that 25 yeah man okay. and, and beast are on opposite where ends i have the... where i have man twice that doesn't mean anything right i don't make it correct no that high. that just means that your god really cares about the man rune and then everything <laughs> so, so, else will be 50 50 i know well you choose you choose two different to be 75 25 ah, okay, so great. i would say I, I was just saying you I would recommend as 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 a as a <laughs> that you choose the man one as one right. of your two. Now, okay. Nora, um, by default, your plant rune is seventy five, right? And your beast rune is twenty five, and then you still get to choose two others. Uh, now 75, it has 25. fertility on the artwork, so would fertility yeah. be my other? Yeah, sure. So you can choose fertility uh, against death to be your other one. Okay. Uh, Sorry, Josephine, you stepped away. I'm not sure yes. when. Sorry. So, did you did you hear me explain the 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 form runes? Nope. I can't remember. That's okay. Did you um did you do your you chose your primary secondary ones for, for elementals? Uh, for elementals, yes, I did. Yeah, you did, and did everyone add ten to their air as well? Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, cool. Even if you have zero in air, you you get ten. Yeah. yeah. From being yeah. from Sartar. Yeah. Uh, okay. okay. So Josephine, uh, with the, the you'll notice the powers, the, the sorry, the form power and form runes are all in pairs. So like truth and illusion, fertility, death, man and beast, they're all opposite. So uh, they all start at fifty fifty, and as mm. one goes up, the other goes down. So you get to choose oh. you get to choose two different ones to go to seventy five, which means their opposite one goes to twenty five. Okay, so death is going to seventy five. Yeah, me too. Yeah, which will make your fertility twenty five. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, and then another one, and then the other one is disorder. Will be seventy five. Yeah. Um. Sorry, Brian. You may have already answered this, but where I have a spirit rune uh, affinity as well, do I do anything with that? Uh, no. But you just uh, it, there's a maybe before we play, what you can do is you can print out your sheet and, and add a spirit rune symbol to your sheet, and we'll put in a number to it as you gain. Okay. Game numbers, because and once everyone's sorry, go ahead, Joe, Josephine. And one, so the rest are fifty-fifty. The ones that we haven't chosen. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Now I'll. Uh, now the next step is I'm going to get everybody to make a note of this, and I'll let you all do this um, off screen because um, that'll take up some time. But you now actually get an additional fifty points to spread amongst any of your runes. Cool. Oh, um, so you can just yes. drop 50 into one thing. For instance, Troy, if you wanted to just up your spirit rune from zero to 50, you could do that. Uh, but bearing in mind that if you change any of your uh, your power form runes, if one goes up, the other goes down. Um, so maybe just take a note of that. And between now and our first session, you can mm. go through and add those 50 and I'll make sure that everyone does that. That's cool. Uh, cool. Makes sense. To both uh, kinds of sorry. runes or just, or yeah. just the power uh, runes? Uh, amongst them, yeah. You could put like 30 of these points into your elemental runes and you could put the other 20 into the other one. Yeah, um, you can spread them however you want. You've got um, points. That's really and cool. Can, and can we, can, uh, do we have to be in a cult that has like spirit specifically to put points in there or can we also? Uh, gen- yeah, if you don't, if, if you've got a special rune that's not on the character sheet, you need to have a way to access that. So you can't okay. just like s- slap right. them into plant, yeah, or anything like that. So. Great. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we're now going to generate characteristics, which is super exciting because this is this is old school. We're going to roll dice and add them together. This is Pathfinder oh, yes. 1, baby. Yeah. Now. Yeah. now this is right. familiar. Exactly. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go, we're going to go through and uh, this, this is where the, the, these next few steps of character creation will feel a little crunchy or a bit old school, um, but once that's done, that's most of the sort of mathematical crunch done for the system, right? Uh, all right, so we're going to go through. Uh, everyone got a pile of d6? Mm. Uh, how many do we need? Uh, at least four, but, you know, you can roll them over and over again. Uh, so what you're going to do is, so for your strength, dexterity, constitution, power, and charisma, you're going to roll four d6 and discard the lowest results 
add them together and write it down. I trust oh, you all yeah. to do that. Okay, in, now, however. In order? Uh, yeah, so you're going to do strength, dex, con, power, charisma. And uh, however, so roll four, discard the lowest, and you can't be higher than 18. Okay. Okay. So if you. Yeah, that's. <laughs> If you've if you're higher than eighteen, you've done something wrong. That's why I'm just, we're all yeah. doing strength right now. <laughs> you, you, okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so everyone do do this strength. Write it down. Oh yeah. yeah all right. So so like, what if I want to have a strong character? Like yeah, I might it. just not. Ah! Right? Correct. This is okay. this is really old school. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> to, to to be fair, um, in the game, most of your roles will be based on your skills. Uh, and occasionally, it's not like you know. Yeah, but we'll, we'll find out. You might just, okay. maybe you're just a bit sickly. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, my I mean, second it, it feels so bad. like it feels like in this setting, in this age, like it doesn't matter. Like if you're Correct. strong, yeah. you have to fight to survive. Like you, you know, one hundred percent. You also, um, yeah. Go ahead. Garbage. Trash. I, uh, Trash. Uh, this is insane. Is con, con next or intelligence next? Uh, so after strength is dexterity. Oh, oh, Thanks. okay. Because okay. I'm like, I rolled an eight for con, and that would explain okay. why I nearly starved to death all those <laughs> times. But that's my dex instead. That's right. Okay, I can do that. Okay. Um, so, uh, how come there's a characteristic associated with an elemental rune? That seem I feel like I'm seeing that in the book. Is there? Where's that? Where? It oh. says it says like water characteristic dex. Uh, like, oh. Yes, because uh, where am I looking here? You will. Uh, get a bonus to some depending on okay cool oh no you, sorry that's mechanically so because the way you use runes in the game is to become impassioned by the rune so for instance if you want to make a a, um, a a roll for a characteristic that has an association with a rune you can roll on the rune to give yourself a bonus to that it's to augment it yeah, augment it right? yes exactly cool. yes correct uh, right, so we're doing dex? strength, dex, strength, dex, intelligence, mm -hmm. power, charisma, or just power, charisma. Uh, so you've done strength, dex, con, power, and charisma. Con, oh, con is power, hard. charisma. Okay. Yeah. Con so is the. So we don't do size in it. Oh, sorry. There's a few questions there, Nora. <laughs> uh, so con is the third one. Con is the third one. Yes. Sorry, Troy. Uh, sorry. So, uh, and did you say size and int as well, or no? Uh, we're going to size it into slightly different. So I don't okay, do so yet. strength, dex, con, power, power charisma. 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 Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Oh my god, this is... <laughs> oh no, what have you this done? This is amazing. Well, I'm starting to picture this character, like they're starting to come to <laughs> yeah. life. And yeah. I happen to put duck? I happen to put my highest rune of 60% elemental in water. Because uh, yeah. I just, nobody said that. So I was like, I'll put 60 in water. And I see that it was dex. I was like, okay, so maybe they're a dexterous sort of, uh, not not strong. So I rolled strength, I rolled an 11. Then I rolled dex, I rolled a 15. I was like, this is awesome. And as I'm going through and thinking about the history of this character from, you know, nearly dying, has a wicked scar, <laughs> uh, yeah. is a murderer, or yeah. maybe based on my clan was doing like a contract kill for the clan, still <laughs> killed somebody. Uh, and then was sold into inventured servitude. My charisma is a seven. <laughs> nice. I like this fits. I rolled three ones yeah. and a five. Oh my God. I, well I rolled done. pretty solid, I gotta okay. say. So has everyone done those uh, those first five? Yeah. Yeah, first okay, five so are done. All right, so for your size and intelligence, you're rolling 2d6 plus six. Okay. 2d6 plus six, okay. Okay. All uh, right. I got a 14 in size and a 13 in intelligence. Okay. That's 16 in size. Damn. Uh, I and mean, you said, <laughs> you said big, you got, rich, and famous. It's all, I mean, two like D6 stacking plus them up. Six? So there's, there's even 2D6 plus six. Plus there's actually six. a chart here to tell me relevant size stuff. So in pounds, a 16 size person is between 199 and 209 pounds. And you're at least six foot two. Hell yeah. Wow. Okay. So I got 11 in size and 15 in intelligence. Okay. Let me just double check your elf sheet to make sure I'm not... Uh, no, there's oh, yeah, nothing I, for about your characteristics there. That's okay. My stats May are I stupid. ask a question about the character sheet? Uh, it you looks may. Like, it looks like there is a checkbox next to power, but I don't see a checkbox next to any other characteristic. So, Why uh, is that? So for those of you who played Call of Cthulhu, you know that when you... Um, 
in the in the game when you make a successful roll on a skill you check the box and that skill might get bigger mm. at the end of the session uh that can happen in this game can happen to your power rating because magic is in everything got it okay yes. cool and you also your power rating goes up and down a lot more often every time you join a new cult aka multi class uh you <laughs> you have to permanently sacrifice a point of power to join the cult so that sort of stops you from spamming them and getting access to all the sweet secret magic. Um, all right. Has everybody done that? Done. Mm-hmm. Now, now you're going to allocate three points among any of your attributes. So you can do one <laughs> in one, two in one, you know, three in one, whatever you want. But they can't what's, go higher than 18. Okay. What's good? What's bad? Uh, there's, there's a weird aside, like. Um, I, I dearly love uh, my my close personal friends, colleagues slash boss Jason Gerrall and Jeff Richard. Um, but some of this book is written pretty old school, and uh, it says that if the if the uh, if the uh, it says to dis- disregard an adventurer whose characteristics average twelve or less. Just disregard it. <laughs> Start again. Okay. <laughs> my average okay. is fifteen. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. We're putting three points into something. Yeah. And How big you- can I get? <laughs> you, you, can't, you, you can't go higher than 18 also before you add the three i'm giving everybody a veto so if there's one characteristic that you would like to re-roll and accept the new result yes oh, so accept the higher of the two results it's not gonna be rude you can, okay. you know, if, you, if you roll lower just keep the current one if there's one you'd like to re-roll you can do that now my dex is at Joe, you can't re-roll your charisma yeah, might as it's well re-roll hard, one great. Narrative uh, reasons why your charisma's low. Uh, all right, I'll take a free reroll. I'm going to reroll my power, which I rolled a nine on. I think I can. Oh yeah, yeah, higher power is good. Yeah. So I rolled an eleven and over an eight for the second. Okay. Yeah, I rolled an eleven instead of a nine. I rolled a ten instead Dead. of a nine, and then <laughs> I can, uh, I can. Uh, so now okay, I can so distribute three, three points. points. Now everyone can have three points. Three points into yeah. anything or all at once, Correct. or does it matter? So you the can qu- split them up. I think however you okay, want. You can split them can. up however you like. Yeah, the question is, you can go to eighteen size. Is that what you're mm -hmm. gonna say? Yeah, and how large is eighteen? Eighteen is in pounds. Is uh, between two hundred and one two two sorry two twenty one and two fifty three, and but you're you're at least six foot five to six foot six. You're in there. (sighs) So. If Imagine I if you were also fantasy, a duck, right? Josephine. You'd be a giant six foot six duck creature. <laughs> <laughs> like, Man. <laughs> the if possibilities I- are endless. I know. I know. I know. All right. so, uh, so, Brian, give me a yeah. hint. Uh, I, I don't, uh, you know, I, I don't like to. I want to. I want to munch. I'm a bit of a. You want to munchkin this bad boy. You want to munch. So it, no. My question is just: <laughs> Is it dumb for me to like bump up a little bit of strength and dex, which is kind of how I see the character right developing? Or should I put that in power if I have a 10 power? Is 10 power well, just bad? Well, do, ask yourself this. Do you want to be a primary spellcaster? Not really. Okay, then don't worry about your power. Okay. Slap that slap that bad boy in dex and con and strength if you want to. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, so I rolled ridiculous. I now have- Did you really? <laughs> I have an 18 strength. Oh, my I God. I have a 14 con, 13 size. My lowest is dex with an 11. A 14 intelligence, a 15 power, and a 16 charisma. Hey, this is this is this is this is this is how games work. All right, like and and look, the reason one of the reasons RuneQuest wasn't quote unquote updated to be more of like the balance thing is because balance in this balance in this game is not actually that super relevant. Like even if you've got lower numbers, like yeah, your numbers would be lower. But as I said. Uh, Troy's character will just as likely die from an arrow to the face <laughs> as as Joe's charisma seven boy. Like you know, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. yeah I, w- okay. I went with I went with I got reasonable. I'm going with seventeen yeah. size. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> okay. Which is two hundred and twenty pounds, six foot three. I right. love it. Perfect. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> now I didn't want anyone necessarily to munchkin straight away, so I didn't tell you the rest of this stuff. But based on your uh, uh, your runes influence your adventures characteristics you know because of your behavior and your physical development your intellectuality um each adventurer you get a rune modifier bonuses for their corresponding to their primary and secondary elemental rune affinities so um josephine what was your primary elemental rune that you chose the highest one? air so you get um plus two to your strength or your charisma and these can take you over 18. Oh wow. oh, wow. Oh, wow. It's a good thing okay. you didn't tell us. <laughs> okay, <laughs> strength is going to 19. Okay, and Joe, Josephine, what was your secondary elemental? Earth. Rate? The second highest. 
Earth, uh, con or charisma is plus one. Okay, I'll, I'll bring my okay. charisma to yeah. 15. Okay. All right, Nora, what were your, uh, your highest elemental rune? Uh, Earth is the highest and moon would be second highest. Okay, so Earth, you can put plus two into con or charisma and moon, you can put plus one into power or charisma and you can stack those. You can just st- put, choose charisma both times uh, if you'd like. Plus two for con or charisma for the first, uh, for Earth and for moon was plus two to the same so ones? So pl- plus, plus one to plus power one. or charisma. To yeah. Power or charisma. All right, I'm okay. going to add one to power. Yeah. And then I will add two to constitution. It took a lot for me to survive yeah. all of those <laughs> starvation. <true>. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Uh, Troy, uh, what, did, what did you have? Moon and darkness are my top moon, two. It, moon is your highest. Mm-hmm. So you get plus two to power or charisma. And darkness <laughs> is, is plus one to your size or charisma. Plus one to my size. So yeah. if I wanted to, I could have a 19 charisma. If I just put both you, of you could. My goodness. Now, before we, we're about to get into skill category modifiers, which are based on your characteristics, and some of them having a high characteristic is bad. So right. What? Really? You know, keep that. For some of them, for instance, in your dexterity, like the, the movement category, having a really high size might be bad because you're not quite as dexterous if you're 220 pounds and six foot six. Believe me, I know. <laughs> I just so wanted just... to live my tall fantasy. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to I'm gonna put tall one point is, in yeah. size and then go with an, uh, two points in charisma. So I have an 18 okay. strength and an 18 charisma. Sure, sure. All right. Uh, Joe. <laughs> He's Joe, beautiful. Joe O'Brien. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Right, Joe O'Brien, what are your highest? Uh, mine were water and darkness. All right, so pl- so water is the highest. Yeah. So water is plus two to your dex or charisma, <laughs> and darkness is plus one to your size or charisma. Uh, I'll go. No, no I'll, charisma for you. It's staying at seven. I'll bump that no charisma, charisma up to eight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I would have laughed so hard if you're like water. That's a minus four to size. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> minus Joe Brian. Uh, Brian, not to backtrack, but those fifty yeah. points among our runes. Were, yeah. Could those be power and elemental, or just the power? They, they can be spread across both. Yeah. Mm, okay. 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 All right. All right. Uh, so we're now going to do attributes. Uh, so your magic points, which is what you spend to cast your spirit magic spells, which are the most common spells that everybody has, um, uh, is equal to your current uh, power. So whatever your power currently is, uh, that is your maximum magic points. So, for instance, Troy, your power is like, what, 28 or something like that, isn't it? <laughs> for 28, yes. yes. Uh, yeah. No, my, my power is 15. So, you're saying that's my m- magic that's your, points? So, yeah, your magic point pool will be 15 of 15. Where Makes is sense magic? That's, magic points is on the, uh, I think, the front sheet. It's like a yeah. little grid-looking thing. On the right-hand, yeah. bottom right. The bottom. Yeah. yeah. Magic. Oh, okay, so I have 15. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. That's really simple. Everyone just writes in what their current power is, for their, their characteristic. Everyone's with me so far? Yep. yep. Okay. That's cool. A little circle on there. Sorry, uh, Nora, I'm just I'm reading. I'm a little lost, I'm sh- I think. Oh, sorry. Uh, so, so your magic points, Nora, uh, which in the game is sort of like your, your mana points, uh, which is on the, at least the sheet I'm looking at, it's on the, the front page of the sheet at the bottom right-hand corner. There we go. Magic points. Yeah, yeah. And yours, and it's your your magic points is equal to your power. Your power. Okay, so fifteen. Also, Nora, a cool thing. You know, there's a special elf spell that only elves yeah. get called arrow trance, which means because arrows are made of wood, you like merge your consciousness with your arrow when you shoot it, and it makes. Yeah. Anyway, I just noticed that it's pretty cool. Um, I love it. Yeah. Cool. Uh, all right. Hit points. Now. Two things. You have hit points because each part of your body in this game has a level of hit points. Your arm will have hit points. Your face has hit points. Your chest has hit points. And then you have overall hit points too. Your overall hit points are if you like get splashed with acid or you know you you, you contract a disease or something. But mostly your hit points are going to be like uh, Joe for some reason decided to roll to block this axe with his arm and uh, you know, try to bat it away, which is and a fun thing about RuneQuest combat is that when you are attacked, you get to res- respond, you know, and that can be responding with an attack or a dodge. Or in this example, Joe is blocking an ax with his arm. With and his the bare axe does- forearm. Exactly, yeah, bare forearm, and the ax just cleaves through the forearm. So it doesn't matter if the ax does 20 damage, 
his arm only has five hit points. So it does just mean he just severs his arm completely, which is a thing that happens more often than you think. Uh, because the other thing <laughs> oh, is, dear. if you've got a shield, right? You've got a wooden shield and your opponent rolls like 20 on their damage roll into your wooden shield, they might splinter the wooden shield and then just continue on cleaving into your arm. Uh, so, you know, weapon matchups matter. If you've got a spear and the other guy's got a ball and chain, just be like, yeah, maybe this isn't a great matchup for me. Okay, so yeah, keep that in mind. So, uh, right. so your total your total hit points is what we're going to do now, all right? Uh, so your 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 total hit points, which are on your character sheet, you can see a section. Yeah. Your hit points, your total hit points are equal to your constitution but they're going to be modified by your size and power. So I'm going to go this once once we're going to go through this one at a time. So Josephine, what is your constitution? 16. Okay, so your hit points are 16. What is your size? 17. <laughs> so add 2 to that. So, okay, so we're at 18, okay. Yeah, and what is your power? 13. 13. So there's no no positive or negative modifier okay. for that. So you so just, just get plus 2. 18. 18. Okay. Okay. So write write down that. So Nora, what mm -hmm. uh, is your constitution? My constitution is fourteen. Fourteen. So your character, your, your hit points start at fourteen. What is your size? It is an eleven. Uh, that's okay. No positive or negative. What is your power? Power is fifteen. Uh, fifteen. All right. Also no positive or negative. So you're just a straight fourteen. All right. All right. Joe, what are your hit points? What is your constitution? Oh, uh, mine's 15. It's going to go down, I think, because of my power. All right, I'm at 15. Okay. And what is your size? 14. Uh, which is plus one. All right. And what is your power? 10. Okay, no negatives. You're okay. 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 All right, great. All right, Troy, I saved you to last. Uh, uh, <laughs> Constitution. My con, is, my con is 14. Okay, and what is your size? 14. Uh, plus one? Uh, and what so, is your power? So 14 plus one, uh, 15. Yeah. Your power is 15? Mm-hmm. Okay. No, no, no modifier. That's okay. okay. All good. So 15 total. Yeah. Okay. So the total <laughs> the hit tank. points. So you've, you, each on your character sheet, you've got like this little like chart where it's like a little stick figure guy. Yeah. yeah it's got the head yeah. point. So that's this is where you're going to put in your total hit points for each of your hit locations. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. So I'm going to go through this one at a time. All right. So uh, Josephine, what's your yeah. total hit points? I love total this. Total hit points is 18. 18, so each leg is six. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> okay, hold on. Yep. Uh, you got that? Yep. <laughs> your, abdo <laughs> your abdomen is six. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, your chest and your abdomen are two different places. I forget in this game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your, your chest is seven. Okay. <laughs> If anyone else is 16 to 18 hit points, this is also you. Oh, 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 oh okay. So I am. So six okay. in each leg. Six yep, seven abdomen, in the chest. seven chest. Yep. Okay. Then five in each arm and okay. six in the face. <laughs> Not the face. <laughs> uh, Nora, what are your, your total hit points? Total hit points is 14. 14. Okay, so you've got five in each leg. And I'm a 15. Is this going to be the same? Okay. Uh, yes, it will be. Okay. So five in each leg. Okay. okay. <laughs> five is, in your... No, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, does this game just consist of parties, like, with <laughs> amputated limbs just hobbling from town to town? Like, we said for a long time, it's really important to have a healer who knows the, not just the heal spell, but the heal body spell. The heal spell is a basic spell that everyone has access to. It just heals hit points on a one-for-one -one basis with your magic points. But the heal body spell is required to repair severed limbs. Okay, so, so they yeah. can be pre prepared. Yeah, like they, they, if someone has the yeah, none of us your body spell. <laughs> none of us took those those gods. Probably no. not. No, uh, sorry, that was doing so. Uh, five in each leg, five in abdomen, six in chest for both Nora and Troy. Nice. Four in each arm and five in the face. <laughs> I just love the way you say it. Four yeah. in each and arm and five, five in the face. Five. Yes. In the face. Exactly. <laughs> Wow, this is really starting to fill out here. Exactly. Um, right. is everyone's healing rate should be next to that health box, I think, somewhere hit points. Is there a healing rate just to write in your healing rate on your character uh, sheet? Mm, uh, oh, it's combat. under characteristics, guys. The healing rate oh, per week. Oh, it is, week. yes. Under, yes, there is yes, healing, healing rate. rate per week, yeah. Okay. Okay, so this is based on your constitution. So if your constitution is between 13 and 18, which mm -hmm. I think everybody's is, yeah. it's just three. Okay. 
Okay. So that means you heal three hit points a week, naturally. <laughs> your damage bonus. So this is the the bonus dice of damage you roll when you're doing hand-to-hand combat or like if you're using an axe, you also get this, all right? Um, uh, so please, everybody add together your strength and your size. So add those together and then one at a time, tell me what they are and I'll tell you what your damage bonus is. So Josephine, what is your strength and your size together? 36. Damn! 36. So your damage bonus is 1d6. So whenever you do any attack with any kind of weapon, you're always going to do a flat extra d6 damage. <laughs> that so is jo- awesome. So, so, Joe, let's, so Joe, let's just say Josephine's character just punches you in the face. Yeah. What's your, what, are, what are the hit points in your head? Six. All right. So if you roll a six, Joe, you might just kill him. <laughs> just just, <laughs> just, one just shot. flat. Yeah, one shot. Just blow <laughs> you. Yeah, exactly. That's incredible. So, Okay. Uh, Nora, what is your strength plus size? 24. 24. So you, your damage bonus is 1d4. Uh, Troy, your strength and size? Uh, 32. 32. 1d6. Nice. Uh, nice. nice. All right. Joe. We can arm I'm, wrestle. I'm right in the middle of 27. <laughs> 12. 27. 1d4. Yeah. Damn it. No one was 12 or less for minus 1d4. So <laughs> that's fine. Okay. Uh, spirit combat damage. Uh, we might... We, Let's just quickly do spirit combat damage because we might go into the spirit world and fight some spirits. So it's very similar. <laughs> I do have a uh, 10 in spirit combat. Exactly, for rolling. It's like, so power plus charisma, everybody. So, um, <laughs> Josephine, what is your power plus charisma? Uh, 28. Uh, 28. That is 1d6 plus 1. <laughs> Extra <laughs> spirit combat damage. Nora, what is your uh, power plus charisma? 27. 27 is 1d6 plus 1. That's the same as if it's... If you're 25 to 32, which probably most of you will be, it's 1d6 plus 1. Is anyone not between 25 and 32? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks for pointing Troy, it out. Uh, okay. <laughs> Troy, <laughs> Troy, I'm Troy, on the you? higher end at 33. Oh, 33, 1d6 plus 3. And Let's Joe, go. you're lower. 18. 18. <laughs> 1d6. Just the flat 1d6. Oh, okay. that's not that bad. Okay. But Troy, okay. I'm pretty sure your spirit combat should actually be 30 if you got a 10, because we got the base of 20. Oh, we had a base 20? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, exactly. so great. Thank you. Good call. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What's that little just, check? Just check you box? two, though, right? Just you mm-hmm. two. Had yeah, we had, yeah, we had some yeah. history. <laughs> <There's> some history. Some <laughs> history. All right. Spirits. So you've also got uh, your base strike ranks, which is when so in combat and rune quest, uh, everyone you don't roll for initiative. It's just based on how fast you are or how the reach of your weapon, and it just so each attack will have a number assigned to it, and you go through, and that's how you. It's sort of like a built-in initiative sort of. Um, so there's two different. There's a size strike rank and a dex strike rank. So everyone's mm. dex strike rank uh, depends on your dex. So as uh, everyone's dex sort of between nine and twelve. Anyone have lower than nine? Dexterity? No. Okay. Anyone have higher than 12? Yes. Okay. So everybody except Joe has dex strike rank three. Uh, Joe, what is your dex strike rank? Uh, sorry, am I confused? I have an 18. Just, sorry, so what is your dex? Your dex, well, your, your dex score, is yeah. 18. So your dex strike rank is one. Now the lower is better because that means you you go first mm-hmm. and everyone else goes third, right? Oh, I'm remembering this now. It, yeah, it's exactly. like a yeah. little confu- yeah. or very mm-hmm. confusing at first. Yeah. Yeah, at first. And yeah. then as soon as you understand it, it's just like, cool, you'll, you'll, your deck strike rank will be one and then you add a dagger, which adds plus it one feels to that, which means yeah. you very realistic, yeah. actually. Yeah. When you yeah. break yeah. it down, you're like, oh, yeah. 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 And if you've got like a pole, like you've got like a, like one of those like orc poles from Lord of the Rings that goes to like nine feet, it's like strike rank zero because you're going to attack from so far away. Yeah. You know, that kind cool. of thing. Thanks. Okay. So everyone's got that. Now that you've got a size strike rank, everyone's size between 7 and 14? No, or everyone's bigger no. than that? Yeah, right. I'm, I'm a big uh, girl. I'm between that. <laughs> You're between that, so your I'm size between. strike rank is 2. Okay. So, Nora, both of you is 2. Uh, 15 to 21? That's yeah. me. Yeah. Both of you? So that's 1 for you. Okay. Oh, our, our big size makes us faster? Uh, Reach, right? Some things. When, when a thing uses your size strike. So a weapon will say, this yeah, weapon yeah, uses okay. your size strike yeah. rank. This I see. Rank. Club. All right, so if we look at our skills, this is one of the last things we'll have to do. I'm so excited. Is everyone having a good time? Oh, yes. Uh, yes. yes. If, this is if you're not, I, please. Yeah. I love <laughs> filling out hit points for legs and arms. <laughs> <laughs> do our, I, I just want to, before we go to the last thing, do yeah. our passions add anything? Like, for example, mine was like for a deity. Is that, should I 
choose that. Uh, we'll 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 do that After. Uh, in a second. Yeah, you'll because you'll okay. get one for your cult. Yeah. Uh, oh, so I see. also Ish. also I, I yeah. just wanted to say something else here uh, in terms of my impressions. When we <laughs> I've done a lot of character creation episodes <laughs> on this stuff, and uh, almost always the big chore near the end, especially with the fantasy ones, is gear. Uh, and, oh, yeah. uh, and, and equipment, and I'm always like, oh, yes, like it's just the pain in the ass part and the not fun part. This is the first time I've ever, in the middle, looked at like a thing and been like, I need something on my right arm. You know what I mean? I'm like, <laughs> like I can see the number and I can see a gap where it says like your armor on that arm, and I'm like, I need to buy something to cover that right yeah, now, yeah. and I'm like excited to do it. So what if yeah. I told you that if you use it to defend yourself? It can become broken and like might splinter and then you have to note that the armor on your left hand is is not as good as the armor on your right ah, anyway. feels so <laughs> real I love it so, so yeah. you'll see the skills on your character sheet on the second page are broken into categories so there's agility skills communication skills knowledge skills magic skills mm -hmm. can, can everyone see that so yeah. you get a base modifier for all the skills in those categories based on your characteristics so I definitely lied before when I said characteristics didn't matter uh, okay <laughs> So agility, agility skills modifier. Um, oh wow! So, uh, so everyone's got the agility skill there. If you've got, oh Jesus, uh, <laughs> what's? What, <laughs> is everyone? Anyone have seventeen to twenty strength? Uh, uh, yes. Josephine and I. So you both get plus five. Uh, oh, it's just a modifier to all of them. It's mod. Well, it, yeah. So there's a base modifier on the just to the right, which goes a. You don't write it in every individual one. Yeah. Right, right, right. Because if your size is 17 to 20, you also get minus five. Oh, no. So, so mine's are zero. <laughs> yes, correct. Oh, so mine, uh, oh, yeah, so it's, wait a minute. So our agility is zero. Yeah, zero. So if uh, right zero now modifier. is a five. Yeah. Yeah, so what's your dexterity? 11. You have dexterity 17 to 20? Oh, I do. 11's fine. You do? So you get plus 10 to all the agility. Whoa. Things. Makes sense. Makes yeah. sense, okay. And does anyone have power 17 to 20? No. Nope. Okay, that's fine. Uh, no. no, okay. So, if, yeah. So, it sounds like Joe's the only one who gets a flat 10% bonus to everything. Everyone else is at zero. If yeah. you weren't so big, you'd be all right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, communication. Does anyone have 17 to 20 in intelligence? Intelligence, power, or charisma are the ones you get bonuses for. 17 to 20 in intelligence, power, or charisma. I have an 18 charisma. Okay, so you get plus, uh, plus 10. Nice. Let's go. And no one else has 17 to 20 in any of those. I don't things. have 17 yeah. in anything. <laughs> that's, that, look, that's okay. Live your truth. Um, <laughs> knowledge skills. Does anyone have 17 to 20 in intelligence or power? No. No. No? That's okay. Are, are there any just, penalties for having garbage? Uh, if, in, unless you get really low. It's like between one and eight. You okay. Like, oh, okay. Okay. You know, so don't worry about that. Yeah. So, uh, uh, well, magic, hold on a second. Yeah. I have an Ooh. eight charisma. Does that matter for communication? Uh, oh, really? Yeah. You're wait. I thought you were a high charisma. No, uh, I'm very low. So Troy was high five. charisma. Minus, minus five. five in communication makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, I love it. Uh, so magic. Wait a minute. Why does that means I can't dance? It's giving me <laughs> no, a penalty no, to doesn't, dance. Doesn't mean you can't. It means you're bad at it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Sorry, That's buddy. Fair. Yeah. We didn't want to be the ones to tell exactly. you. Exactly. <laughs> uh, it's RuneQuest, so when you try, there's a chance you'll get. Yeah, better. you have a five percent exactly. chance of killing that dance. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's not. Look, it's not great, but it's 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 good. <laughs> All right. Uh, so your magic skills category. Uh, anyone have seventeen to twenty in power or charisma? Again, well, eight charisma. You've, okay. you've charisma. Oh, right? I'm sorry. Yeah, in charisma, yes. Uh, so plus five percent for you, Troy, to your magic skills category. Let's go. Manipulation uh, it, skills. Sorry, is it minus five yeah. for me with low charisma? Uh, no, it's not in this category. Okay, actually. great. Yeah. Manipulation skills. Uh, so it's seventeen to twenty in strength, dex, intelligence, or power. Any yes. of those kind. Strength. Yeah, strength. Yeah, I have eighteen in dex. All right. So strength is plus five. Dex is plus ten. Hmm. All right. Oh, Dex then, is a killer for these skills. Nice. Exactly. And uh, perception is seventeen to twenty in intelligence or power. Mm, no. Mm -mm. Nope. Nope. We're all good. And stealth seventeen to twenty in size, Dex, intelligence, or power. Yes. Yeah. Dex. Yeah. Strength. Dex is plus ten. Size. <laughs> Minus ten. Yeah. I, I figured. So. I was like, how yeah. is this going to help me with stealth? 
And no one has power, right? Yeah. Straight dice rolls for me, baby. <laughs> Minus, melee weapons. I, don't, I don't have to do any math. Yeah, now. Minus 10. <laughs> Stealth. Yeah, I'm just going to exactly. announce myself always. <laughs> yeah, something uh, okay. tells me, Josephine, you're about to shine here in the melee weapons category. <laughs> exactly. All right. Uh, so... Um, I'm going to, we're going to do, choose all our skills because a lot of skills things to point. We're going to do that off, off air because that'll, okay. that'll take some time and it won't be as exciting, but everyone just trust us. There's plenty of skills to choose from. <laughs> and the last thing we're going to try and plug in here is our cult. So each cult we choose. Wait, uh, wait, there are no melee weapon modifiers? I thought it oh, was there, my there, moment there, to shine. There will be. There, there okay, will there be. will be. No, okay. oh, we're going yeah, to come back. I'll calm down. We're going to come back to that. It's okay. <laughs> and then what we'll do is we'll recap at the start of the next step. Like, hey, who's got over 100 in their broadsword? Yeah, okay, very cool. <laughs> and you can go over 100. It's, it's, it's a thing. Phenomenal. It's, you definitely can. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, yeah, cool. All right, so our cults. So let's um, let's let's do... Uh, who should we do first? Who wants to go first? The cult. Uh, I'll go. Rocking- I'll volunteer. Yeah. And, and who did you choose? Uh, I choose Babister Gore. Babista Gore, the Avenging Daughter, which is one of the Earth Goddesses. So again, Babista Gore is page 49 of the Earth Goddesses book. Uh, there's a lot of lore in here that you can read, that you will read up on before our next session, won't you, Joe? So you know exactly Absolutely. what you're doing. Absolutely. I mean, I okay. already read the whole Babista Gore uh, yeah, entry because it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Okay. Yeah, there's there's the... um there's a cool detail here because there, it's not just like I mean the artwork is is pretty scary looking, but uh, an overall vibe I got and you can tell me if I'm wrong is that like they a lot of the cult followers are sort of the the rare violent arm of the Earth cults Correct. and they're they're, yes. they're really only kind of used in times of war and when specific cults are disrespectful of nature or earth yeah. they yeah. And they're when not oath like breakers right, oath them breakers. so yeah. so they're kind of not evil they're they're like Ooh. they're violent no, against there's, there's, evil there's no of. there's no evil there's actually one of the books that's coming out the cults of runequest is the the lunar cults book so it's just all the the lunar empire moon gods which, oh, and they're not cool. evil. They're just different. They look great. Uh, anyway, so hey, what is an oath breaker? So someone who's like, I swear to never be bad to you, and then you do bad stuff, and then the babies oh, to go. And you hunt them down. And hunt, hunt them down with axes. True. Speaking yep. of which, don't Joe break O'Brien, your promises, Joe just O'Brien. Mean. Please, please add the following to the uh, your starting skills. So your skills, your one-handed axe gets plus fifteen percent. Ooh. And uh, sorry, one-handed axe. Sorry, I'm so making one, a note of this. One, one H axe. It'll be one H axe plus yep. 15%. And your two-handed axe is plus 20%. Oh, whoa. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. I'm going to try and make note and choose, like, different weapons. If I can. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, then bear in mind, this will be in addition to all the skill points that you'll get to uh, put yeah, in. Yeah, so yeah. these okay. can go up high. Uh, so you'll have cult lore, uh, which I think is a knowledge skill. Cult, cult lore. lore. Yes, it is. And you'll write in there Babista Gore because it's your cult. Uh, is 15%. Uh, a plus 15%? Looks like it plus starts fi- at 5. Plus, yeah, hell yeah. Plus 15. These okay, are all pluses. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, so you also get plus 10 to your... Plus 10% to intimidate, which is a communication, communication skill. Yeah, all right. Uh, meditate, which I think is a knowledge skill, is plus 5. Okay. Uh, speak Earth Tongue, which is the secret language of the Earth worshippers, is plus <laughs> ten. You might have to write that one in there. It'll be a, it'll be like under communication speak skills. You'll have to write speak in Earth lang- Tongue, secret Earth Tongue. Is that like a Druidic yeah. language kind of? Exactly. Yeah. This is on this is on page fifty four of the Earth books. If you want to follow along with all the the skill, right. the bonuses so you get. Did you say secret Earth Tongue plus five? Uh, plus ten. <laughs> oh, plus ten. ten. Okay. Yeah, Earth Tongue. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, just... <laughs> Only in this setting. Secret yeah. Earth Tongue. Sorry, did you say earth Secret tongue. Earth Tongue plus 10? <laughs> yeah. How was your date last night? Remember? <laughs> <laughs> I noticed you got a really high fertility room. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, and then oh, I see man. Worship. Worship Beast of Beast of Gore plus, plus 20. And then you've got the spirit magic, and you can just choose a number of points. Or so you can see each spell there has a number of points next to it. You can choose a number of points that cannot go higher than your charisma score to know those spells. Got it. 
Okay, I'd recommend Blade Sharp. That's the basic buff spell. It can be between one and five. But again, we can confirm all that stuff off mic and then we'll let everyone know what spells we've chosen. Okay. Yeah, cool. And then you've got, uh, you, you have to pick one of your favored passions. Devotion to Babista Gore, loyalty to your temple, or hate Oathbreakers. So hate Oathbreakers. Pick one of those and it becomes 60%. What? <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll decide. I'll decide. Okay, you pick all that. All I right. think I want some loyalty in there. I already have two hatreds. Who all am right. I loyal to? <laughs> all right, uh, let's do Eldraya uh, for Nora. Uh, all right. While, while we're here. Eldraya. So Eldraya, Eldraya, the goddess of the woods, who's on page uh, 28 of the Earth Goddess's book. Um, the initiates of... Uh, oh, sorry. The initiates uh, Sorry, of, real, real quick, oh, Brian, before you right. jump into that. The basic... So for these uh, favored passions... There's no number associated. Does that mean 60? Do they all 60, start at 60? 60, okay. yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, so the initiates of the High King Elf. All right. So um, your cult law, Nora, which is a knowledge skill, is mm-hmm. plus 15. And this this box of the initiate skills that you get is on page 39 of the Earth Goddess's book. So you can basically go through. So you'll get uh, and just add those skills to your sheet. So you'll get cult law, Eldriah. You'll get elf bow, meditate, plant law. Know exactly what the plants are, plant law. <laughs> You'll get sing plus ten percent, which is great, and the worship. And then uh, again, you've got a very long list of available cult spells uh, to nice. choose from, which again you can just select uh, a number of points equal to your charisma, and we'll then we'll you know we'll, we'll pick those 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 off screen too. Uh, so Josephine and Troy, uh, did you both have Earth Gods or you had Lightbringer Gods? No. We had Lightbringer. Lightbringer. Both, uh, that's actually worked out really well. We've got two, <laughs> what, two from each book. All right. Uh, so, Troy, you you took Duckafell, didn't you? Duckafell. Duckafell. All right. <laughs> Duckafell. Duckafell. I'm thinking of Shaka Duck-a-fell. Khan. Duck-a-fell. Uh, page, uh, Duckafell. Page 80 of the Lightbringer's book. Yes. Uh, okay. So, that's where they are. And the initiates of Duckafell is on page 85. So, this little cutaway box here of your starting bonuses. Yes. So fill those out. You'll get Cult Law, Duckafell, Meditate, Sing, Speak, Spirit, Speech. Speak, Spirit, Speech. Here you go. <laughs> spirit Combat. You get a bonus to your Spirit Combat and your Worship of Duckafell plus 20. You get to choose literally any of the Cult Spirit spell, uh, any any Spirit Magic to be your Cult Spells, which is great. Um, and I've sent, I've sent you all a copy of uh, the Red Book of Magic, which is every spell in the game in one book. So you can just go through that. And, and awesome. we just get... Pick that one of those that's under the cult spirit magic uh you get a number of points of them equal to your charisma so Ah. for instance if one's a four point spell and you've got you know 14 charisma then you get to choose that and then 10 other points worth and then your favorite passions you choose one of the favorite passions which is (laughs) love uh or loyalty and joe josephine sorry what which uh what was your uh gagarth 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 yeah i i I filled out my skills the only thing 91. that I was going to ask about was the types of rides, because I got a little ride skill here. Oh, yeah, pick the type. Yeah, what 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 do you want to ride? Like anything? Well, you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. Uh, you, you could ride a horse. Do, are there dinos? Are there dinosaurs? Yes, there are dinosaurs. But it's worth pointing out that dinosaurs are a type of dragon newt. Oh, and someone hates those. Oh, yeah. um, okay. I might not get along. But if I'm That's like okay. writing one, it's like submissive. <laughs> well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll, I'll think of some what's animal that, ride a, then. What's that hatred percentage ride? at? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's been really cruel to your, your dragon horse when you're not around. It's a 60%. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. There's, there's all things like there's bisons, there's antelope, there's sable, there's ostriches, there's apparently big flamingos um, that we decided on oh, earlier. I will ride a pink flamingo. Mm-hmm. Nice. Because I overcame my fear once they once they trampled me, I almost died. I then, uh, yeah, I overcame, I overcame. I did want to note that one of the one of the things about this cult is that um, we are outlaws, um, which yeah, is the only thing that I was. That's why you got cowboys riding the their, their dragon horses into town. <laughs> yeah, we're all outlaws. We're all we've all been like exiled. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> um, yeah. It does say for favored passions, hate 
anything. Um, do you have any suggestions <laughs> in the lore of the world? <laughs> Amazing. Uh, Russell Sprouts. We could, we could, I mean, we could keep a consistency and say you hate the Olivian clan for some reason. You could yeah, also something do something like, I, hate, I could hate Oathbreakers if Joe's character also hates Oathbreakers. You could, I don't know. I think hate, I would hate a lot of my dragons. cult members probably if that was the case, sure. though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or, or leaving? Or leaving clan if you want to hate that clan. That's a, that's a good option. Yeah, that way we have something that unites us. <laughs> Brian, I had a ticky yeah. tech question. Um, yes. So I, for under passions, it says yeah. honor, and I have a five. I got that through the initial thing. Yeah. And then I've got hatred or leaving clan, love, parentheses, I haven't filled that out yet, hatred, yeah. lunar empire, and then I have loyalty, parentheses, shaman. Does that start at 60 as well? Uh, the So the, the, the passions you've got, uh, the, 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 the favored passions for your, your god, mm -hmm. you choose one of the ones options. The, the options that you right. So if but I yes, take when, loyalty, but when you gain one, it starts at sixty. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Sure. Perfect. Sure. All right. So the only things that we've got left to do are um, our, our starting skill points, apart from the ones that you got from being in your cult, as well as your uh, starting starting rune spells and and stuff, which we'll we'll pick uh, off screen, and then basically, you know, we'll go through the what is different from a spirit spell versus a rune spell and which ones are going to be super cool and, and special and exciting and we'll do those at the we'll just let everyone know at the start of uh our, our first session uh, but otherwise <laughs> like this is this has been this has been a pretty uh a, a pretty i'm gonna say involved uh character creation <laughs> session uh i haven't actually made characters for a game for a while uh because <laughs> a lot of the games i run are usually one shots or where people make their characters at home and bring them along uh, so this this was this was fun to do for the first time in a while. Did everyone have a good time? Anything anyone wants to oh, shout yeah. out or anything oh, anyone yeah. would like to criticize that I can bring back to the, the <laughs> uh, seriously yeah, bring, I'll back I'll bring to the back. designers? Yeah, yeah, I will be like, what the hell? Um, but yeah, I think we've got I've got a pretty good idea of like who each of the characters are. Um, I, obviously, the other thing you'll choose off screen will be like your character's name, anything other elements of the background. I've already that you'd chosen like to it. Oh, what is oh, it? Yeah. Your character's I name? did too. Yeah. His name is oh, yeah. Rex Manheim. <laughs> shaman of death. Yes, man. <laughs> shaman of death. Amazing. And Nora, what's, what's your character's oh, name? Mine. Uh, mine is uh, Skeptocles the Unconvinced. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Skeptocles. He's also like a, a, a creature made of wood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I let my uh, I let my chat pick my name. Um, oh yeah. It is. Vilma T. Vorfrahavenshire's son. <laughs> <laughs> it really rolls oh, yeah. off the tongue. Yeah. Yeah, nickname? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Excellent. I'm so excited. And all I'm going to say about our... Because I know sometimes at the end of these, these, these shows, you do like a little teaser role-playing bit. Like a little, little, little bit. We, mm. we don't have time to do that now. But all <laughs> I'm going to say to get everybody excited... So remember that, like the Lunar Empire that's just been pushed away, and the evil Red Emperor that was slain by the Dragon Rise. Mm -hmm. All I'm going to say is, apparently, the Red Emperor has returned. Oh. What did you I say? Know. Oh, 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 oh. And he's a member of the Olivian Clan. No. no, 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 no. <laughs> we want blood. <laughs> All right. Uh, so. I don't know. I, I'm not hosting here. Uh, I'm assuming if you guys, you folks have a, have a sign off or something you'd like to like to wrap. Like everyone, let, let everyone know what they're doing. Or I'm not sure what you normally allow. Well, first, uh, before we totally wrap, I want to thank yeah. you, Brian, for coming out and and running us through this. I mean, you must just be sweating right now. There's so many tables. You're picking up various books, yeah. flipping pages back and forth. Uh, just amazing work. Uh, yes, and and wow. uh, you know, it was it was great getting to play with you, uh, GM at Gen Con last year and that's what first you know had us uh, having this idea that like we need to have Brian on Friends of the Pod and oh, so, so you did a fantastic job getting us started here big thank you to Josephine and Nora of course great to get to play with you guys again we haven't played yet but we're gonna we're gonna dive in soon but it's great to create characters and stuff and and get off and rolling so uh, I'm gonna go and try to figure out what kind of metal I'm gonna strap to my right arm because I'm not going out <laughs> with nothing on there that would be that would be insane <laughs> uh, thank you, Brian. Thank you, Josephine and Nora. Uh, we appreciate you guys. Friends of the Pod is going to return, hopefully, uh, very soon with the initial launch into the adventure uh, that Brian has put together for us, featuring so Moon Quest uh, role playing in Glorantha. Can't wait. Until then, good night, everybody. Bye. Good night. <laughs>